The 2011 Conference USA Baseball Tournament being held in Mississippi, but with a big taste of Texas. Crosstown rivals Houston and Rice playing here for the CUSA title and automatic NCAA bid. A sweltery summer evening here in Pearl, Mississippi, just outside of Jackson's side of the Conference USA Baseball Championship between Houston and their Texas neighbors, the Rice Owls. Eight teams began play here this weekend, separated into two four-team pods. Houston winning pod one. They held the tiebreaker over East Carolina with the head-to-head -head win over the Pirates. Same deal for Rice beating UCF yesterday to advance. Hi there, Jason Knapp here alongside former big league shortstop Kevin Stocker. And Kevin, both of these teams want to win the Conference USA title and the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Rice also in play for a national seed for the NCAA postseason, but Houston needs to win this game just to get in. Well, they do. It's been huge for them. They had to get hot at the right time, and they have. Their hitting has been phenomenal. And Rice, on their hand, they've had some defensive troubles, but they know they've got to get that going. They've changed some things tonight. That's what it all comes down tonight. Cougars sub-500 record coming into this tournament overall, but showing a flair for the dramatic this weekend. Couple of nights ago, longest Conference USA game in the tournament history. Into the 14th inning, Ryan still lays down the bunt. John Cannon scores the game-winning run, and the Cougars clinch a spot in the tournament final with the win over Southern Miss. It still has been a story for the Cougars this weekend. Well, he has, and when you get into big games and big tournaments, you have to have a spark, and he's been that guy. He has been on base 11 times in three games. Not to mention defensively, he gunned down a huge guy at the plate the other night. He has been their guy. Well, Rice has been the team here in Conference USA. The Owls in the conference tournament final for the fifth time in the past six years, looking to win it for the fourth time. But uncharacteristically, they've had to play come from behind baseball a lot this week, trailing in each of their pool games, winning two of the three to get here to the weekend. And oh, yeah, the Owls still have arguably the best player in all of college baseball in Anthony Rendon. Well, Absolutely. Certainly a top two pick in the country. Unbelievable hitter, especially by his stats. This year, he's had a sore shoulder, a few little things, little tweaks, and they've had to move him around a little bit, especially in this tournament. Defensively, Rice has had to make some big changes. He's playing second base tonight. I haven't seen that, but for a guy like him, he's young, he's ready to go, great composure. He's their guy tonight. Well, Rice has dominated Houston head-to-head -head this year, winning all five meetings, but it only means one thing right now. The winner tonight wins the Conference USA Tournament title. For each school, it would be their fourth all-time. The lineup to the first pitch on the way from Mississippi. College baseball on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by MLB 11, the show. Welcome to Next Level Sports Gaming, only on PlayStation. By GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call GEICO at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit GEICO.com. And by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Ready to go here in Mississippi. Conference USA Baseball Championship between Rice and Houston. 163rd meeting all time between the rivals tonight. And Rice has owned the Cougars of late. Houston losing 14 straight to Rice. They play five times a year. The last win for the Cougars came back in 2009. Let's take a look at tonight's batting order presented by MLB 11. The show for the Houston Cougars. Caleb Ramsey has been a hitting hero throughout the year. Hitting a three. 26. We'll see him at the three hole tonight before, uh, behind still. And the freshman Landon Appling, Matt Creel in the cleanup spot. And then it's Coconos, Jensen, Ansley, Morehouse, and catcher John Cannon uh, batting in the ninth position. And on the mound for Rice, Matthew Reckliff, 6'4", 205 pound junior out of Kincaid High School in Houston, uh, beat the Cougars earlier this year. And certainly, Kevin, he's a guy that 
has improved mightily this year. Bullpen guy before, but he's rounded into a nice start. Well, he, re he really has. He relies on that big 12-6 curveball, but when you talk about bullpen pitcher, those guys are usually adrenaline guys, and they have to be able to control that, and that has been an issue for him. He sometimes gets ramped up just too much, and then it, it just really becomes about command for him. He gets ramped up, he can't find the strike zone, and that's trouble. Now we'll see if he can get that big league curveball as his manager Wayne Graham says over the plate on a consistent basis tonight as you look at the defense behind him with Cook, Fuda, and Lewis in the outfield. Holscher, Hamilton, Rattery, and Shagwap at first base. Chris Manuel behind the plate catching and reckling on the hill with the start tonight looking for win number five of 2011 for the Rice Owls. Wayne Graham, 31st year as a head coach, last 20 at Rice, looking to lead the Owls and surely will to the NCAA tournament for his 17th straight season, seven trips to the College World Series, including that national title in 2003. The squad struggling for a bit, but they have turned it on, reaching the 40 win mark for the 17th straight season. Time now for the Bud Light first pitch. Here we go from Mississippi. And Reckling will face Ryan Still, senior from Westside High School in Houston. You'll hear a lot of the Houston high schools for these two teams in the city. They've mined a lot of the talent from the region and from Texas to their respective schools in ball one. In the initial offering from Reckless. Still top 10 hitting in Conference USA. Takes a called strike. Perry Costello calling balls and strikes tonight behind the plate. There are six umpires for this Conference USA championship game. A couple of guys working down the lines as well. And that one missed two and one on the count. Ryan Steele, and we've talked about him at the top of the lineup, and, and you'll see this with all of the Houston hitters, very patient. They're more than willing to get deep into the count. This one laced on a line, sinking and falls in for a hit. Bounces away from Keenan Cook, and still gonna take the extra bag and go in to second base with a leadoff hit for the Cougars. Yeah, a solid start for Houston. Well, again, not, done, not trying to do too much, but the sun is going to be a factor. You can see some sun out there. He gets a bad jump, and then he just flat out loses it here. Unfortunately, he takes a bad hop off his knee, but this is the kind of stuff we've been seeing from, from Houston the last couple of days. They've just been scrappy, taking advantage of every mistake that other teams give them. And they have ruled that a base hit and an error on Cook, and that is the seventh error of the weekend for the Rice Owls, normally a solid defensive team. They had four errors in their opening pod game loss to UAB. Wayne Graham said it was the worst game of the season. Houston, sacrifice punt, executed nicely by the freshman Appling, and still over to third with one out. And Caleb Ramsey will be the batter. This Houston team, not a lot of power, but they do play small ball very well. Second in Conference USA. That's their 69th sacrifice <laughs> part of the season. Well, he believes in trying to win every inning. That's the key for him. Score run an inning, you're going to do pretty well. Todd Whitting, first season as Houston head coach, Cougar alum, former assistant coach of this team in the late 90s, early 2000s, spent the last seven years part of a strong staff at TCU. And here's Caleb Ramsey. And the top hitter in the Conference USA tournament so far is at the plate. Senior hitting 600, six for 10 so far in this event. And trying to get the Cougars on the board first. Inside offering, did he go around? Nope, the appeal to third. And Greg Street, the umpire there, waves it off. Counted right. one and one. Oh, what a nice job by Emmanuel. Look, look at him bounce back there quick. Not trying to glove it. I've played with a lot of catchers that try to glove that. Save the run. Nice play. Reckling looking still back to third. As you look at the numbers for Ramsey on the year. 
leading the team with 46 runs batted in, trying to get 47, the liner snagged there at second by Michael Ratter. And that is a big second out of the inning. Rattery has been having all kinds of problems catching the ball this season. He's kind of run into a little mental problems, but he has to fight through that. And here he makes a really nice play. At second, you see the base running. Nice job. You got a freeze on a line drive when you're third. Not in any sort of a hurry. But I think when you talk about Rice and going on like they're going to do in regionals, they're going to have to have Rattery out there at second base. And Wayne Graham told us before in the dugout of the game, said he was kind of back and forth. Do I put Rendon there? I put Rattery there. And the ball at the plate in the dirt gets away, and the run's going to score. Manuel couldn't find it and still alertly scampers home, and the Cougars have a 1 0 lead. Runner on third base, Ryan Steele, and this is fantastic base running. This is why you work on it every day in practice. Is you want to get off as far as your third baseman. This ball doesn't bounce very far, but he is trying to, he, he knows, I got to get this base, I got to get to the next base. He's very, very aggressive on his secondary lead. A lot of players would not have taken that chance. That's great, that's great base running. So it will go in as a wild pitch, and Houston able to manufacture a run here in the first. And Creel has a 2-0 count. That's kind of the way the Cougars have been doing it, clawing and scratching no matter what they can do to get it done, and things go well when they've scored first, especially here this weekend of this Conference USA tournament. And Creel lacing one to left field for a two-out single. Before the game, you and I had a chance to go down and, and talk to some of the guys in the dugout, and it was obvious to me the Houston dugout was very loose. The guys were talking and yapping, and it shows in the way that they're swinging and approaching the game. They're aggressive, they're loose, they're taking big swings, relaxed swings, just here in the first inning. It's good to see. This team came in sub-500. Overall, they were 12-12 and 12 in Conference USA during the regular season, tied for fourth, but they lost the tiebreakers, so they were actually the sixth seed. That's the lowest seed that the Cougars have ever been in the Conference USA Tournament. Todd Whitting tried to rebuild here. Cougars have been decimated, injuries to a lot of players, most notably pitching staff, but the guys that are here have been giving their all, and really a one-game season now for the Cougars. They win, they keep playing, they lose, they go home. See Reckling calling for time, a little conversation here with Manuel. Well, Reckling needs to calm down a little bit. Rice is going to get their runs. I mean, that, that's just part of it. You know, Houston's going to try to play for a run and inning. Houston, on the other hand, likes to play a lot of times for the big inning. So for him, it's just about settling down, throwing strikes. Houston's tried to run in the tournament. They have, they have not had any success stealing bases, so don't worry about the guy on first base. MP Kokonos, 2-0 count to him. Fouls one back to the netting. Sophomore out of Memorial High School in Houston. And he's a guy that was a backup catcher, but moved to first base because the other potential players and options there for Houston at that spot weren't hitting earlier in the year. Kokonos has done a nice job since moving over there. The 2-1. Missing inside. So Reckling trying to find some rhythm. Look at Kokonos with two outs on the ear. And would love an opportunity to come up with his second hit of the Conference USA Tournament right now. Part of the all-freshman team in CUSA last year. Takes it low, and he'll work a walk. And just when it looked like that line drive off the bat of Caleb Ramsey might help Reckling and the Owls escape unscathed. The wild pitch allowed still to score. Then a hit by Creel, followed by the walk to Kokonos. And Chase Jensen will be at the batter. Well, uh, again, this is going to bring a little visit here from David Pierce, the pitching coach for Rice, and he's just trying to calm down. Now, I don't think Wayne Graham will waste any time getting the hook out if he has to. I mean, this is a big game for Rice. They have hopes of, of hosting a regional. 
and that it's going to really come down, I think, to this game. That's how big it is. So he's got plenty of guys in his bullpen. He's not going to be afraid to use them. Now Rice certainly in if they need the at-large ticket to the NCAA tournament. And they're still hoping maybe that they could get one of those top eight seeds, which would mean that they would host a regional and then a super regional should they win in the opening weekend. Yeah, I, I think it's still a long shot. I do. I, I mean, we're playing. They're playing Houston, who doesn't have a. You know, they've had a tough year. The RPI is not huge. It's going to be tough with so many other good teams out there. But at least give yourself a shot. And of course, we've seen a lot of upsets yesterday in tournaments all over the country. So. Rice's RPI currently 11th in the nation. Houston in the mid 50s. First pitch to Jensen. Out of the zone again. Sophomore transfer from Weatherford College, originally from Arlington, Texas. And he's hit close to 400 so far in the Conference USA tournament. Reckling piling up the pitch count here in inning number one. This one to the hole and short. Top play there for Hamilton. Can't make it and everybody's safe. We'll see how they score that deep in the hole and veteran shortstop. How would you see that one? Well, that's a tough call. I, I, I would. I'm a defensive guy. I stick up for shortstops. I'm going to call that a base hit. And but honestly, this is a play I think he should have made. And they have ruled it a hit. Ball's hit hard. He gets a nice little hop, though, here. And that's one of those plays. If you can get it on that big hop and then fire it to third, you have the force out of third as well. Third hit of the inning for Houston. And now Joel Ansley with the bases loaded and two outs. Swings through, strike one. It's that big curveball we talked about with Reckling. And a lot of times when pitchers have a hard time finding the strike zone, they're struggling. Go to your best pitch. His best pitch is his curveball. Even if you might have to throw it three times in a row, if you can control that pitch and get it over the zone, fire it up there. Ansley, senior out of Wharton, Texas, and chops one foul. So quickly, Reckley jumping on the seven hitter here in the order for Houston and has the 0-2 advantage. Next offering will be pitch 20 of the opening frame. Wayne Graham saying that everybody's available. Get an inning or two just about of anybody in the pen. And the way Reckling is struggling to find the strike zone here, they may need a lot of guys in this game. Well, yeah, on both sides, even with, with Houston as well, they're going to get into their pen fairly early. And that's kind of the result of having a tournament like this where you burn a lot of guys, have a lot of games in a short amount of time. That's why you, a lot of times when you have midweek games, you want to give your young guys opportunities during the season to make sure they're ready for these big time, you know, big tournaments. Reckling outside. Manuel has had a busy first inning dancing around behind the plate. Well, this is why I never wanted to be a catcher. I mean, seriously. When you get guys with, he's got a huge, big snap hook, curveball. You're going to be working on that the entire time. I mean, those catchers, especially if you're quick back there, can really, really help you out. The 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Called strike three, and Reckling gets a big K to end the inning. But Houston getting on the board first. one nothing Cougars headed to the bottom of the opening inning. On in the top of the first to this 2011 Conference USA Baseball Championship. Rice coming to bat for the first time. And let's look at the batting order for the Owls tonight presented by MLB 11. The show, Keenan Cook, now the freshman left fielder, will start it off, followed by the switch hitting JT Shagwa. And then Anthony Rendon, Michael Rattery, who's been on a tear of late, will hit cleanup. Then it's the catcher, Craig Manuel. Right fielder, Ryan Lewis, followed by Fuda, Holscher, and Hamilton. And they will face Jared Ray. Just his fourth start of the year, coming back from shoulder surgery, has pitched somewhat sparingly for the Cougars as they work him back to full health. Missed really almost a couple of years of time and what can we expect to see from this Cougars right well you see his fastball and you see 84 to 92 that's quite a discrepancy there but that's because he's not quite sure when he throws the ball sometimes you think it's a slider it's 84 and he can get up to 92 veteran guy but like, like you said he's been off for a while I think they're really trying to get three good innings they'll, they'll feel lucky to get four tonight 
but the nice thing is that emotionally he's a veteran guy. He's not going to get, you know, if he gets in trouble early, it's not going to affect him, and that's what you want in big games. Uh, hoping to have some experience on the hill in this huge showdown for Houston, a must-win game for the Cougars, a win, and they get to the NCAA tournament for the first time since winning the Conference USA tournament title in 2008. Ball one to Keenan Cook, freshman out of the Woodlands, Texas. About a half hour or so outside of downtown Houston. Hitting a 277 on the year. This one grounded. Through on the right side, play over. Just beat it out. What a diving play by Still. Ray was covering, but not in time to get the speedy cook. Your corners, first baseman, third baseman, they are taught to get everything that they can, go as far as you can and commit. And he does that here at first base, but it kind of leaves a gap open. Nice job here by Ray to cover. And still, I mean, you got to be kidding me with that play. Great effort. Made that play very close. No, almost, but like the Cougars, Rice getting their leadoff man aboard in the first inning. And JT Shagwa, the first baseman, at the plate. Two homers on the year. The second of those coming yesterday, he hit a 3-2 changeup out on top of that party porch in right field here. It was a no doubt about a job. Part of the Owls 4-2 win over UCF. Ground ball here, only play at short for Jensen to first and in time to get Shagwa. Look at the defense for Houston tonight. Behind Jared Ray, Ansley, Appling, and Ramsley in the outfield. Cody Morehouse at third. He can also pitch. Did a great job in relief at the other day in the extra inning win against Southern Miss. Jensen at short, still at second. Kokonos at first. Cannon is catching. And on the mound, the righty Jared Ray. And here is Anthony Rendon in the familiar three hole for Rice. And doing damage as usual. National Player of the Year last season. Conference USA player as a freshman and a sophomore. His numbers have dipped a little bit this year, but there's no question he's going to uh, get an opportunity to be a very high draft pick, if not the number one guy overall next month. Oh, yeah, I think he might be number one. It all depends. I think he's going to be the first hitter that's going to go. Now, with his numbers, a lot of that is, at least some of it, is a reflection of the bats are a little bit different as well as he has battled some injury. And this one line right on the button, double play. Jensen able to snag it, the backhanded flip, and they double up Cook off second base. Nifty defense for Houston in inning one. Before Allegra D, congestion and pressure from allergies shut me down. After Allegra D, I can breathe. Allegra D provides fast, non-drowsy, 24-hour relief of your toughest symptoms, even reducing swelling that can cause congestion and pressure. After Allegra D, I have it all. CBS College Sports Network is now CBS Sports Network. 1-0 lead for Houston as the fans try to keep themselves cool here at the Conference USA Baseball Tournament Final in Mississippi. Tune in Monday to Virginia for the NCAA Division II Softball National Championship just outside of Roanoke, noon Eastern from Salem right here on CBS Sports Network. That community Salem, Virginia hosted so many NCAA championships over the years and here in Pearl, Mississippi, first year of three in a row to host the Conference USA Baseball Tournament here at Trustmark Park. Matthew Reckling on the hill for the second inning for Rice. And his first pitch to Cody Morehouse is a ball. Mentioned last inning, Morehouse at third and also does a little bit of pitching. And he really helped save the day for Houston the other night in that game against Southern Miss. 14 inning game, Kevin. First seven innings he played at third base. He went three for six in the night with three runs scored. And then he got the win in relief. Six and a third innings of shutout ball. And another one fouled back. Count one and two. What I love about that is we, we can talk about a player going from third to the pitcher's mound. 
But Mitch Williams used to always talk about how he was a pitcher, but really should have been playing infield somewhere. See, pitchers are finicky that way. And he's, it's, he had a chance to go out there and kind of prove himself, which was great. The one, two, chop foul. So 14 innings the other night in the game here between Houston and Southern Miss, and that clinched their spot here to the tournament final. And the game started at 9 o'clock or after that local time because the game ahead of it went 11 innings. So they finished at 1.50 in the morning here, Thursday night in Pearl, Mississippi. <laughs> Another foul as Morehouse stays alive. Four hours and 43 minutes. Houston blue leads of 3-0, 5-3. There's over 450 pitches and two ejections. And the man you just saw there, Todd Whitting, was one of them. He didn't see all 14 innings. He was tossed in the 12th <laughs> after arguing a call at the plate. Houston runner was thrown out that would have ended it at that point. And Morehouse down on strike. Second K in a row for Reckley. Well, this is a big out, getting the leadoff hitter. And he's, he started him off with the big hook. And I think you'll see a repetitive, you know, sequence coming from him. See if he starts off with another hook, trying to get that first pitch strike. Catcher John Cannon will be the batter. He's the guy that scored the game winning run in that 14 inning marathon the other night. First pitch from Reckling inside. Your first game in the big leagues went a little while, didn't it? It did. It went a little, it went a little while. You know, my, my first game in the big leagues was 20 innings. 20 innings long. At least you get the win, so you can talk about it. And if you lose that game, it's a miserable game. If you win, it's, you know, it's a piece of cake. 20 innings. Called strike to Cannon. It was with the Phillies in 93. And did you play all 20 played innings? Played all 20 innings. I played all 20 innings. It was 0 for 6. Had an error. Made a nice play. Saved the game on one play. Had a sack bunt. They win the game. Game's over. Everybody's, well, hi, everybody's going to create my first big league game. We're all high-fiving. I go inside, and the manager came and got me, took me into his office for go see, and chewed me out after a win because of the way that I was swinging. Had some, so they changed some things. But point being is never be dissatisfied with one win. Now, Reckling finding a little groove here as Cannon gets punched out. Three strikeouts in a row, two in this inning. Here's another look. Well, take a look at this pitch. Big old hook. That's the second one he's got looking on that curveball. Well, Rain Graham, as you might expect, is pretty spot on knowing his players. He said that curveball of Reckling, when it's on, yeah. it's lights out. And when it's not, it's real bad. And we've yeah. seen a little of both so far. We have. His biggest problem has been his fastball. So there's a nice curveball trying to get that first curveball strike. That fastball, if you can't throw it for strikes, though, eventually guys are going to start to sit on the hook. Here's still let off the game with a single, stretched it into two bases after the error in left by Cook, and was sacrificed the third and scored on the wild pitch. The 1-1 one, one from Reckling. Catching a piece to the outside corner, it's one and two. You know, hitters have a choice when they go up there. Now, most of the time, most hitters will sit fastball and adjust off of anything, off of that. The other way to do it is to go up and look for one pitch, but you have to look for that pitch the entire at bat. In other words, like Edgar Martinez was the best at it. He would, he would say, hey, this guy throws a great curveball. I'm going to look curveball, but not just like picking like when he does. It's the entire at bat. But then when you get the curveball, he would never miss, would never miss. You just, one thing you can't do is you can't guess pitch to pitch. You will fail when you do it. This one chopped up the middle. Reckling able to lob it over, and the side is retired. Three up, three down. Here at the top of the second. Cougars, though, still with a one-run lead. Wayne Graham, there in his familiar spot, in the Rice dugout, place that he's been for a couple of decades. And leading this Owls program. While we've got a moment, let's take a look at the Lowe's Senior Class Award finalists honoring their work in the classroom and community, their character, and their performance on the field. A look at some of the top candidates from across the country in Division I. To vote for a Lowe's Senior Class Award finalist, log on to www.seniorclassaward.com.
inning number two for Jared Ray. On the bound for Houston, and he'll face Michael Rattery. And a called strike to the sophomore from Memorial High School in Houston, and he has torn up not only Conference USA, but Houston in particular. The 0-1, rope, wicked hop, past Morehouse at third, and Rattery aboard to Rice with a leadoff man on in each of the first two innings. When you watch Rattery at the plate, one thing that, that comes to mind for me is just his balance. And not only that, he gets a little jammed on this ball, believe it or not, but he still hits a bullet, and that's because he is unbelievably strong. So when you talk about second base having trouble catching it, he might be a, a guy that plays professional somewhere, but it just may not be at second base. A rattery with that base hit coming in, hitting 542 in the five games against Houston this year. So his average is rocketing up even further now in the neighborhood of 600. The batter will be Craig Manuel, catcher. Another Rice performer hitting over 300 this year. To the power numbers down for both of these teams. Not a lot of home runs. Houston only 19, Rice just 22. Certainly some of that the dedicated to the new bats that have been much talked about about college baseball this year, taking a lot of the power out of them. How much has it changed, in your opinion, what you've seen this year around the game? How much different? I think it has drastically changed it. I really do. And I think that the power numbers are a direct result of the bat. And what I mean by that, though, not only is it a result of coming off the bat not as hard, it's not you're not getting that same bounce. I think the pitchers are pitching differently. So now pitchers are, are coming inside. Now, it has always been in the past, especially last year was a great example with those bats that you, you could get jammed and hit a ball out. Guys were diving over the plate. They weren't afraid, so pitchers were pitching outside, outside, outside. Eventually, they would just hang one. So they're pitching inside more, which is helping them. So I think in relation to all of it, I truly believe that the bats, through one way or another, I think it's a direct result of that. Manuel lifting one to left. Ansley there and makes the play. And you just look at Rice in particular and the runs that are down. Look at the home run difference, Kevin, and then the yeah. overall runs per game. Yeah, and, and it's with these bats, too, it's people have to understand, you know, what's the, the biggest difference is you can still hit it out, but you have to hit it in the sweet spot every time. If you're off by just a little bit, very similar to wood, it's like just like a wood bat in that sense, then you're going to feel it in your hand. The ball's not going to carry or go anywhere. Wayne Graham talking about with us before the game, differences strategy-wise. Diving play by Coconos at first to Rob Ryan Lewis. Almost, they get the out at second base, but the relay passed, and Lewis will be safe and will advance as the ball went in to either the dugout or the stands, so he'll take second base. So it's a fielder's choice, and Lewis ends up at second. And he'll get an air on the throw, I think. It looked like it was a pretty good throw back to him. Nice play of first baseman here to come up and make the out. At this point, you probably just want to eat the ball at short. Trying to get a little bit too much there. But you got to like the effort. Now, if the error is on Jensen, that would be number 29 of the year. You talk to some of the folks at Houston, they say he's a guy that can make the spectacular play look routine, but sometimes the routine play can be a little bit crazy. Well, that's the thing. We, we talk about being strong up the middle, and you're talking about your catcher, your two middle infielders, and then your center fielder, and more, more than anything else, you've got to have guys that can make the routine play, because that's a majority of the play you're going to get. Michael Fuda, the center fielder. To expand on that, your middle infielder guys, your shortstop, your second baseman, truly, other than the catcher, handle the ball more than anybody else. Relay throws. Uh, they, they go out and they get uh, stolen base attempts, double play balls, infield, pop-ups behind first and third base. They're always handling the ball. So they have to make that routine play. Now, if you can get a guy who can make the routine play every time and has the range and the arm to make those plays, great plays, without making a lot of mistakes, well, then you've, you've found that guy that's going to play Major League Baseball, that sort of thing. That's what you want. But... What's difficult, I think, to learn at this age, and I had the same issue. I could make some of the plays, but sometimes I didn't know when to shut it down. That was a good example on that double play. After a diving play, knowing your hitter, you're not going to get him at first base. Just eat it. Just hold the ball, 
and then don't compound the mistake. And you learn that with playing time and just getting getting into the rhythm of things. Was there a point when the light bulb went off, do you remember in particular? You know, when I got into the minor leagues and started playing for guys like Bill Dancy, who was a, who was a shortstop, Larry Boa and so forth, they assured me that it's okay, Kevin, if you get one out, we're good with that. Like, you're not going to lose your job right away. you got to be okay with one out. And you have to, you got to go say, hey, pitchers, pick me up. You know, rely on the other guys. So I think when I got in the minor leagues, I really learned that. Well, Fuda thought it was ball four. Instead, it was strike one. Papaya has a very slow strike call. Fuda got to be careful. He almost pulled a hamstring coming up, <laughs> and he pulled one earlier this year. Missed about a month of game time for the Owls. The batting average has dipped, but it's come around of late, hitting 308 so far here in the Conference USA Tournament. Fouls one back, and Ray battling back on the mound. Count now full at three and two. Lewis on second after the fielder's choice and throwing her. This one, one hopper, two seconds, still bobbles, but plenty of time to throw over to Kokonos. And the side retired. Through two, Cougars on top of their Houston rival, Rice, one zip. Top of the third here, Houston trying to add to a one nothing lead over Rice. The winner gets the Conference USA Tournament title and automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Cougars need it. They won't get into the national postseason without it. Rice already in, but the Owls hoping to host a regional next weekend and maybe grab one of those top eight seeds if things fall right, where they could host a couple of weekends in the NCAA Tournament. Reckling. Uh, facing Landon Appling. Appling laid down a nice sacrifice bunt to advance Ryan Still and help Houston plate that run in the first inning. One one from Reckley. And able to get it over. Four strike. Recklin struck out three in his six innings of work and a win over Houston in the regular season, and he's already got four Ks here in the third. Well, he's, he's doing a good job of staying on the corners. Here's a nice little slider, a little something away. And again, we've talked about how he's he's got this adrenaline. That first inning, I think it might have just been a little ramped up. He's kind of calmed himself down a little bit. Starting to hit the corners, which the umpire's given him. I think very consistent there. Caleb Ramsey looks at strike one. Ramsey lined out to second in the first inning. 83rd straight start tonight for the Cougars. Swings through that, may have gotten a piece of the way by. 0-2 hole here at Trustmark Park. Home of the Mississippi Braves, class AA team for Atlanta. This park opened in 2005, it's a beauty. And this is the first of three years here at this facility for the Conference USA Baseball Tournament. Pitch from Reckling outside. Coaches wanted somewhere in the footprint of the conference, neutral site that they could all get to. So six or seven of the schools, maybe within a five, six hour drive of here. And so far, so good here for the initial years. You look at the dimensions of the stadium. Well, it's a beautiful ballpark. I mean, it's for these kids to be able to play here, it's great. That what can sometimes be trouble is sometimes you don't get your fans that you, you know, that you need in your, your home parks, but playing surface is great. Beautiful pitch in the outside corner with that fastball. That's one of the first strikeouts he's gotten on the good fastball. But yeah, I'd have loved to play here. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's better than a lot of triple-A ballparks. And a lot of the guys for the Braves big league squad working their way through here on the way up. Guys like Brian McCann, Jason Hayward, Freddie Freeman, all spending time with this as their home ballpark. 
see the familiar Braves logo there. On top of the scoreboard in left center field. Speaking of stadiums, that Reckling name at Rice is a little familiar too. It is Reckling Park that's the home of the Rice Owls. Matthew's grandfather was a benefactor, fundraiser for helping put together things for that beautiful facility that Rice calls home. And you might get the sense that, hey, grandfather's kid is on the team. You <laughs> take one look at him pitching, you know why he's on this well, team. Well, absolutely. Yeah. It, that doesn't play into it. You know, maybe maybe getting into Rice, but not on the baseball team. When it comes to the baseball team, you know, these guys out here, they expect you to go out there and, and do your thing. And if you don't, Wayne Graham's, not, you know, you got to earn your spot. Well, he has settled in nicely here. 1-1 one, one pitch to Creel. Out of the zone, it's 2-1. and one. Now, the first six batters of the game, Reckling gave up three hits and a walk. And since then, in the following six batters, he struck out five of the six. Two one delivery. Fouled back by Creel. Well, let's take a look at what we're going to see. He's a real tall guy. He's got a tall kick. Now watch his follow through. He stays upright. See right there. He's pretty tall. And who that reminds me of is Derek Lowe from the Bigness. He's a tall guy, pretty thin. A lot of guys will finish low. That's what we always teach. We want guys to finish low, use the power in their legs, and then follow through all the way. He stands tall. Now, as a hitter, that sometimes can be tough to hit off of because he, he, the ball comes at a weird angle and he'll get a nice little sink off of that. The downside is it, it's a lot of arm. Man, it's a lot of arm. So you sometimes can get a little bit wild or you throw balls. We've seen a little bit of that today. So again, that's just, he's comfortable with that. He's throwing a lot of pitches, but he's got an unusual windup, but it certainly can be done. Number 20 plus pitches in that opening inning. And again, he's gotten guys via the strikeout. So a lot of balls have been fired to the plate so far by Reckling. And now full count here to Creel. Creel steps out. He understands what Reckling's going through on the hill. He's a guy that does a little pitching for Houston as well. Five wins on the year for the Cougars on the mound. Looking to get a two out hit here. Hard grounder to third. Holscher gloves it, fires over to first. And the Cougars down one, two, three. We'll talk to Houston head coach Todd Whitting in a moment here in Mississippi. Houston striking first, still holding that one nothing lead over Rice here, Conference USA Championship. Glad to have Todd Whitting, first year head coach at Houston with us. Coach, so much riding on this game, need a win to get into the NCAA tournament. It's against your rivals from across town. Right. Uh, how big is it for you to get that first run, and do you sense a little bit of relief to get something under your feet early going for your squad? Well, well one, of, one of the goals in, uh, for us offensively, we talked about all year, is to have that score first RBI. And uh, percentages go way up for you when you score first, so I'm glad to be the first one on the board. You know, Reckling settled in a little bit. Uh, we, we hit his fastball really well the first inning and just got to adjust that breaking ball a little bit. Hey, Jared looks pretty good right now. Yeah. And I know he's, I know you've got some limits on how long it's going to yeah. go, but you have to be happy with what you've seen so far. Yeah, no question. Coming off surgery, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's out there competing, which I knew he would do. And, you know, he'll give us a chance to stay in the game. And it's, it's literally hitter by hitter with him from this point forward. Todd, thanks. You got it. Thanks, guys. Todd Whitting. Helped recruit some of the great talent for the Cougars in his stretch in the late 90s, early 2000s with Houston and did the same at TCU. And now is back at his alma mater. And you would expect him to get this thing going in the right direction. They've already gotten there by getting here to this conference tournament final. And he says, you know, we're trying to change the expectation of the program. And we want to expect to be in this game, and we expect to win this game and to get to the NCAA tournament year in, year out. Yeah, and, and that is one of the biggest challenges, I think, in college baseball is to get these kids to look why you're playing, you know, 53 games or 54 games and what the big picture is. Base hit from Shane Holscher, and for the third straight inning, the leadoff man on for Rice. We talk about big picture, and I got—I gotta be honest with you—the whole time that I played back in college, way back when, 
not once did with our squad and with our team, did we really set any goals as far as College World Series? They were small goals, which is fine, and that's important. But I think it's important to also know, look, we're trying to get to the College World Series. Let's map out a plan. And then you put your small goals in. You can't lose sight of that big picture. And I think that's what he's trying to do. He was saying after the game yesterday, and really a meaningless game against Tulane, as Derek Hamilton tries to set down the sacrifice bunt and bunts it foul. The game yesterday really didn't mean anything. They used some pitchers that they probably weren't going to use in this game, got through the game. They didn't win. But he said, hey, we've got to rest up and get ready for this game. And this bunch has been resilient all year, the word he kept honing in on. And you can kind of see that in the way they play. Absolutely. They've, they've had some tough losses, a lot of late game losses by one run. Kids have bounced back. But even when you go into the dugout with Rice, like with Wayne Graham, when we were asking him some questions, he's thinking, hey, I've, you know, he's thinking ahead. Like, I've got to set up for this. I want to be a super. I want to go to the World Series. I mean, they're talking big picture all the time. So the kids buy into that. They start thinking big picture. And that's, that's that confidence, I think, that Rice has, that Houston had, and he's trying to get back in the program. Hamilton trying to butt it again. This one in the air, tagged out by Wright. Throw to second. Not in time to get a sliding Holscher, but the throw, if it had been online, would have made it a little interesting. Great base running here with Shane on first base. When the ball goes up in the air, it's it's no man's land. You have to hold at first base. You cannot take off running for fear of a double play. He gets a nice read. I mean, it was, it was close, but it was the right read. Nice job. It is a sacrifice by Hamilton, but made it a little intriguing by popping it into the air before it hit the turf. And that'll turn over the lineup for the leadoff hitter, Keenan Cook. He had a single to start off the first. Here's another look at that air bunt. He freezes right there. He has to. You know, it's, you, know you work on this in the game or in practice. It's very difficult to, to um, recreate it in practice. But when the game comes on and your adrenaline and everything kicks in, a lot of times you make a mistake. You know, Ray took the shore out there. He was right yeah. by the base runner, Hamilton. You got the sense that his coach is wondering, hey, should he have given that up and, go, right. and gone to second base right that's, away? Well, yeah, and that's the communication you have to have from the guys at first second and your catcher yelling at you. And they may have been. Um, he, he, he probably should have, in retrospect, have done that. But here we're, we see a little discrepancy. The umpire had called time. One umpire at third base called a pop. He was looking at the pitcher, and the pitcher had stepped off the wrong way, so the third base umpire called a pop, but he did not know that time had been called at the plate by the other umpire. They got it right. Greg Street getting some assistance there at third. Harry Costello had given time at the plate. Healthy swipe there by Keelan Cook, fouled down the left field line. Cook is a freshman working his way into this starting lineup for Wayne Graham in the outfield. And, and the outfield's been a state of flux for Rice this year. They lost Jeremy Rathjen for the year with an ACL injury in March. And he's a guy that hit over 300, 13 home runs last year. And not only was he solid in the outfield, but he was part of the protection of the lineup for Anthony Rendon. Rendo. And losing him to a freak injury when he blew out his knee rounding first base. It was just part of the missing piece of the puzzle for Rice throughout the year. Yeah. Constantly have to make adjustments as a coach. It gets tough. Well, you earn your money that way. And opens opportunity for young players like Cook to step in. One, two count. Runner on second with one out. And fouled back to the screen. Cook staying alive here, and Rice trying not to squander. This leadoff base runner could not get those men around of the first and second. And now with a chance here with one out in the third. And Shane Holscher on second. Pitch from Ray, too tall, 2-2. Two -two. These teams know each other very well. A lot of players from the Houston area 
certainly some of them know each other, seeing and playing against one another throughout the years growing up. And the dominance that Rice has had, you certainly know that it goes back and forth with some of those friendships and rivalries between these two teams, especially with Rice winning 14 straight in the series against the Cougars. But the opportunity for great revenge for Houston today, if they can find a way to beat their rivals and get to the NCAA tournament. They play their normal three Conference USA games during a three-game series, and then they play two non-conference games against one another each year. Part of the Silver Glove Trophy Series. Two first base, Coconos there, Ray covering. And they retire Cook. Holscher, though, does move up to third base with two outs. And JT Chagua will be the batter. Well, nice job by Ray. I mean, he, and he's thrown a lot of pitches this inning. That's one of the things where you're seeing the catcher go out and touch him a little bit. They have to now, like, and you heard the head coach talk about it batter by batter. So they got to go out and see how you're feeling. Give him, a, give him as many breaks during the inning as you can. So a good example there going out and talking to him. A little smile there from Ray. After you battled an injury like he's had, and you wait weeks, months, even more than a year to get back. Got to be a smile when you get the call in a high pressure situation like this. Strike one. Yeah, and I, I think another part of that meeting was, look, look who's on deck. You got Rendon coming up next. We're going to throw strikes in this situation. Of course, when they're smiling like that, who knows, they could have played high school together or they played against each other for so many years. Missing one and one, and as you said, with Rendon on deck, certainly want to try to get out of this jam right away and bear down on the batter with two out. That's outside two and one. JT. At the plate, and Rendon waiting. Talked about the rivalry between the teams. JT said, hey, not going to feel sorry for those guys. We want to win this thing, too. And again, both teams something to play for. Rice trying to get a chance to host first, maybe second weekend. One of those big seeds in Houston trying to win to get in to the NCAA tournament. Three one. And the count now full. When you get a three one count, you want to come out of your shoes. This is not the pitch he's looking for. It's a fastball away, but you, when you get the count ahead like that, three one, especially with who's on deck, you really want to put it into a little box. Just be really selective. Three two. Called strike three. Big pitch from Jared Ray. And once again for the third straight inning, a leadoff batter does not score for Rice. Jared Ray delivering his first K of the game. Top of the fourth here, the Conference USA Baseball Championship. Houston on top of Rice, 1 0. Wayne Graham, the leader of the Owls, with us. Coach Matthew Reckling settled into a nice groove right now for you on the mound. What do you like about his pitching the last couple of innings? Well, he's been able to pitch a little bit backwards. Uh, he's been able to throw the curveball behind in the count or opening up the count, and that set everything up, and so he's done pretty well. You know, you've talked a little bit about some injuries this year, and you've really had your challenges juggling the lineup. What's that been like for you? How tough has that been? Well, you know, you do, you play the cards you have, so we've done everything we could, but it's uh, sometimes pretty aggravating. Wayne, thanks for the time. Good luck. Thank you. 
And certainly he's seen a lot in all his years yeah. of dealing with, if something's happened in baseball, if it hasn't happened to Wayne Grant, probably hasn't happened, right? Exactly. And I love the fact he says it's just aggravating <laughs> to that question. Well, <laughs> you could sense the frustration in his brain when we talked to him, probably what, about 90 minutes before the game. And he wasn't sure if he was going to put Rendon or Rattery at second base. That's right. That's right. In fact, I think he said he had two lineups ready to go. Wasn't sure which one he was going to hand to the umpire. And again, Rattery able to be back at second base. His normal spot, he's been there just about all year, but he had two errors in that loss here Wednesday against UAB. And Rendon, who had not played in the field since the end of March because of the nagging shoulder issue that's plagued him just about all of the year, was inserted into the lineup at second base defensively, played there two games. And now Rattery back at second and Rendon back in the spot he's been most of the year DH. Coconos fouling that one back, count two and two. He walked back in the first inning. And speaking of Rattery, second baseman for Rice and Coconos. They know each other pretty well, talking about the rivalry. They were teammates at Memorial High School. Out. Popped up and out of play. He's doing a good job of fouling balls off. I think in the back of his mind, he's sitting there waiting for that big curveball, waiting for the big curveball. It's going to be coming. He's going to bounce one up there at some point. Swings through it. And then will throw down to record the out. But it's another strikeout victim for Reckling. Number six on the evening. 2-2 two -two counts. You typically want to throw your best pitch. I've talked about that many times. His best pitch is his curveball. What I like about that is he, he has a lot of faith in Manuel behind the plate. And so you, you want to bounce that curveball. You want that to kind of hit just in the back of the plate. As a hitter, I mean, you just don't have a chance. You've got to swing with it with two strikes. He's retired eight straight batters, six of them via strikeout. Chase Jensen now standing in against Reckling. Three homers tied for the team lead with Houston again. Not a ton of power on either squad. Jensen showcased him at shortstop before. Blake Kelso was drafted in the 10th round by Washington last year. Jensen was brought in to replace him. And again, has gone through his ups and downs in his first season with the Cougars. But the bat has been pretty solid. It's a reason you can keep him and accept some of those errors at short with that batting average 300 plus throughout the year. Well, and he's young. I mean, that's, I would say, a majority of your shortstops, majority of your players that come out of high school, or even some from JC and so forth, have a lot to learn because the game is so much faster. The balls are hit harder. There's a lot more to learn, as well as your studies, as well as playing every day. That was the biggest adjustment I had, was going from playing 16 games in high school to all of a sudden you're scheduled with 60. And another strikeout victim for Matthew Recklin. He is flat dealing right now. Well, yeah, Houston needs to get back to a little bit of some small, do something to create. He's pitching very well. He's got his curveball going, and he's just going to keep throwing that thing up there. There's going to have to be some adjustments made by Houston. Again, go up there, look for the hook, drop a bunt, crowd the plate. Get him out of his rhythm. Joe Ansley, strikeout victim back of the first. And the umpire going to say he committed strike one.
Cougars got a run to start things off at the top of the first, and it's still standing up at this point. The appeal to first. And Darren Seeley down the line says no swing. It's one and one. And this is an unusual pitch. You, you see him go out there, does he? Uh, yeah, boy, that's pretty close. His, his wrist didn't break, but he went across the plant's tough one. But that was an unusual pitch. It almost looked like a little slurve or slider, which I know he doesn't have. Takes a little bit off his curveball. It can, it can get a little bit flat. Now see, when you, when you do something like this as a pitcher, and you're playing behind him, you just get bored. You know, it's kind of like a ball hog in basketball. He's taking all the outs. I used to go out there and get on the pitchers and try to loosen them up a little bit about that. That one in the dirt. Three and one on the count. See some of the defenders, Holscher at third. That's right, they're just not getting enough plays. You know, your pitcher's pitching too well. Pitcher didn't, didn't like that one. I don't have to do that all the time. <laughs> just throw it over, give, give me something. Give me something. That one inside, and Ansley able to work a walk. Second base on balls, give it up by Reckley. So the two-out runner here for the Cougars. This fastball here is a pitch that we did not see last year from really any programs, that fastball inside. Now with the adjustment of the bats, the pitching philosophies have changed. I think it's for the better. It's a good pitch. Cody Morehouse with a runner on and two out. Throw over to first. Ansley diving back in. This Houston team, fourth in steals in Conference USA this year. They'll try to run. They've tried to run this weekend a lot, just not great success. One of six in steals attempts so far in the Conference USA tournament. Ansley, five of seven. His steal success rate on the year. And Morehouse getting the signal down at third. Stephen Trout, third base coach, flashing it down to Cody. And also Joel Ansley, the runner at first, and another throw over. These Houston base runners take very large leads. I love it. They put a lot of pressure on you. We used to always work on how far off do you actually supposed to get? How many steps? We, we used to always do a step and a dive. You want to be off a step and a dive. So we would actually lay down, figure out what a dive was, and take a couple extra steps. Swing and a miss, throw down, and a stolen base there for Joel Ansley. So he's in scoring position with two out. Morehouse with that swing to protect the rudder there, and Manuel not able to get the throw down in time. Like the aggression by Houston, trying to make things happen, even though they've had no success really stealing the bases in the tournament. Sometimes it's not just about getting the base, it's about who's on deck and who's up, what the count is. If he's behind sometimes, maybe you got two outs, take a chance, you get thrown out, but now you've got the, a different guy leading off, the guy that you want to lead off the next inning. So sometimes, you know, coaches will think ahead that way. 72 pitches here with two out in the fourth for Reckling. But again, in a conference tournament final, just about everybody able to give Rice something if needed. Ansley on second. And Morehouse now. The count at one and one, looking down to get the signs again. Oh, outside gets away from Manuel. And Ansley easily able to hustle down to third. Wow, that ball really got away from 
Reckling, there's no chance here. Squeezing a little bit too tight, and that's going to get a visit from Graham here. Watch where this ball hits the dirt. It's all the way over in the batter's box. Second wild pitch of the game from Reckling. And you see Ansley read it all the way and easily to third. Wayne Grab out there to talk a little with his right hander. Jeremy Fan, sophomore righty, is warming in the bullpen. Graham going to leave in Reckling for the moment. That looked a little bit more than just maybe a little pep talk. You start seeing his head bob and you don't see him get too wrestled up, but getting after him a little bit. 910 career wins at Rice. Almost 1,500 in his career as a head coach. Usually speak pretty well. You want to have that little conversation on the mound with your pitcher. Morehouse thinking about throwing down the bunt with two out, and it goes foul. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with bunting with a guy on third and two outs. Uh, you just have to make sure that the runner on third base is ready for it. And that's really a touch. You have to have your third base coach in his ear talking to him. You've got to be ready if you get the right guy down there. But. Now he finds himself down two strikes. I think it's always better to try it when you have no strikes on you. There's a lot more pressure on you now with two strikes. 2-2 two -two pitch inside. Morehouse able to get out of the way. A little surprising. I think he might be a little ticked at himself that he didn't let it hit him. This Houston team, we talked about their anything necessary philosophy. They lead the conference in getting hit by pitches too. 78 of those, any way you can get on base. This one, laced to center field. Fuda going back over his head. Extra bases and an RBI for Morehouse. He'll round second and go to third with an RBI triple and a 2-0 lead and the throw over the dugout so Morehouse will score and tack on another run for the Cougars. Well, we talked about his break the ball and the best place to put it is when you try to bounce it on the plate. This ball actually hangs up a little bit and he absolutely just kills it to center field. And then we've talked about some of those problems with Rattery, trying to make too much of something. And again, you're out here on a double cut, the infielders get out there and everything is fine, but he has to be turning and looking where the runner is. He had no chance to throw him out here. This ball, not only did he miss, it sails over the dugout. Second error of the game for the Owls, and again, they're eighth in their fourth game of this Conference USA tournament this weekend. They didn't survive the four they committed against UAB, losing that game. They did survive the two they committed against UCF yesterday. But the two right now doing some serious damage for Houston. And the hit parade continues. John Cadden with a clean single to left field. Very difficult to always have to be coming from behind, and that will not, will just not, will not be able to sustain that, especially when you get against some of the clubs where, in the regional play, Rice has to figure out their defensive problems. So Cannon on first, and Ryan still will make his third trip to the plate here in the fourth inning. 27th pitch of this inning alone for Matthew Reckler. Still at a single in the first and grounded out to Reckling on the mound of the second.
Well, he's squaring to bunt, but I think what he's trying to do, he's waiting for the runner on first base to steal. Whether he missed the sign, he actually broke and stopped. Now, you have the option as a base runner, usually if you get a bad jump, to shut it down. But a lot of times, your hitter's up there, he knows the signs. He's trying to give one. Here, I suspect he'll be coming out of his shoes swinging. Trying to find something on the outside. It's not there. Three and up. Houston trying to extend this inning. Already two across. And three on the game. Called strike. See if he sends the runner here at three and one. Ryan Steele can really handle a bat. I think this is a good situation. You've got to send the runner. What I mean by handle a bat, he doesn't strike out a lot. If it's a fastball, he's got to be swinging. A fastball strike. And it's a delayed called strike two. Still thought he had earned a walk. Count full now with two out. We see a lot of guys jumping out of the box and leaving early on the umpire here. He has a slower strike call, but I'll say what, these guys learn their lessons slow. Slow at learning that lesson, stay in there. Still already extended his hitting streak with that single in the first to 12 games. Looking for another one here. And a fly ball to right field. Ryan Lewis in position, squeezes, and gets the third out of the inning. But two big runs for Houston, and the Cougars lift their lead to 3 0. Houston with a 3 0 lead on Rice, trying to win the Conference USA tournament for the fourth time for the first time since 2008. Take a look at tonight's Geico difference makers. The starting pitchers, Jared Ray for Houston. The shutout so far. And Matthew Reckling for Rice. Gave up a run in the first and then two there in the third. Or check it in the fourth to advance that Houston lead. Out to three nothing. You know, I wasn't sure if we were going to see Ray come back out here to start the bottom of the fourth, but here he is. And the Rice Owls looking on in a familiar position, at least for this weekend. They've trailed in every game of the Conference USA Tournament so far. Lost the opener to UAB. They were down 9-1 in that game. They made it interesting. 9-8 had a chance to win at the end. They were down 5-0 to Memphis. Gave up five of the first. Rallied to win 8-5. Then trailed UCF 1-0 early yesterday before winning that game 4-2. And Anthony Rendon at the plate. And fouls this back. Well, the expected, at least in your opinion, number one overall draft pick coming up next month. Pirates have the first pick. Certainly, he's on their radar. Garrett Cole of UCLA. And the UVA pitcher. And Danny Holton, among the other guys being talked about. You like pitcher? or position player if you're drafted number one overall? Well, it depends on who you are. It's probably going to be like a Mariner. The Mariners, the Pirates, right? I think you're up there. So kind of, I'm not really sure much about the Pirates, what they have in their farm system. I like pitchers. Um, I think there's some question marks with Rendon right now with his shoulder as well. Um, but hitter-wise, I think Rendon's got to be your first guy going out. But I'm always a big fan of taking arms first, and I like taking experienced arms. What I mean by that is guys that have gone to college. Now, there are some high school kids that are going to go very high in the draft. But they just take longer. I think a lot of teams now, you know, like getting the more mature kids that are ready to go quick. 2 2 here to Rendon. And a called strike three. And here's a look back at the entire at bat for Anthony Rendon. Well, you know, he's been swinging a good bat, but you can get to him. Against Houston, he has not had any success. And again, it's all about getting ahead. He gets him ahead by coming in. And they've done that the three pitches in a row. Fastball's in. That ball is trying to come in as well. Randone's a little too picky, I think. There with two strikes, you got to be swinging. And he's too good of a hitter to take that pitch anyway. Uh, he did not agree with that call. Again, a guy who's found first base a lot via his hitting and also his walk ability. 78 walks this year. He leads the nation. Remember, this is just game 60 of the year yeah. for Rice. 
Michael Rattery on the first pitch. Grounds to shoot. Chase Jensen with the play. And quickly two gone here in the fourth. There's you, Rendon in the dugout. You talked about all those walks. I think the 76 walks is a lot. But when you look at second place in the nation, it's like 58 or something. It's not like by a little bit. And he has 22 intentional walks. So, and you'd asked me earlier some like, you know, his, his, his numbers are down a little bit too. I think it is so much harder to DH. And he's had to DH most of the year rather than playing his typical third base position, which keeps you in rhythm. So scouts will be on all of those things. And again, talked about the shoulder injury. We heard it apparently doing some stretching exercises earlier in the year, and it really hasn't been able to get completely healthy. He's been able to DH, but the other issue, of course, has been the ankle injuries the last two summers. Same ankle broken two consecutive summers. One year he broke it, turning it one way. The next year he broke it, turning it the other way. So he's missed some time as well in right. the off seasons. And for him to come back and put up the numbers that he's had, that he has, still so impressive. Absolutely. And it leads to his overall ability and what the future holds for him. Right. And I think so. And again, there's, I don't know, I don't want to say that there's concern about those injuries, but they're certainly aware of them. But I don't think it's going to drop him in at all in the draft. Certainly not. You look at his performance this year, still over 330. Memphis's Chad Zercher actually named the Conference USA Player of the Year as Manuel is able to work the two out walk for Rice. But Rendon is going to be one of the first two or three guys taken next month. Zercher so dominant this year for Memphis, hit over 450 most of the year, leading the country just about all year in hitting. Conference USA top player. First pitch, base hit for Ryan Lewis. So back-to-back -back base runners with two out here for Rice as the Owls try to rally against Jared Ray of the Cougars. side of the infield by the sophomore from Baton Rouge. And there's not too many Division I baseball players that have also thrown a touchdown pass. <laughs> and Ryan Lewis has done that for Rice. Quarterback for the Owls, thrust into starting duty in his redshirt freshman year at a touchdown toss against Tulsa. Ground ball up the middle. And a quick throw over to second for the force out. And Houston keeps Rice scoreless through four. Start of the fifth here, the Conference USA Championship from Pearl, Mississippi. Jason Knapp, former big league shortstop Kevin Stocker. Along with you, Houston and Rice going head to head. The winner gets the Conference USA Tournament title and automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Houston needs it to get to the national postseason. Rice will certainly have an at-large bid awaiting if necessary. And Landon Appling up for Houston to start off this fifth inning. He was a strikeout victim and also laid down a sacrifice bunt back in the first inning and takes a called strike, even the count at one apiece. Matthew Reckling, despite giving up those two runs in the fourth and a near 30 pitch inning still on the hill for Rice. The appeal to first base, he did not go. And the count two and one. Appling batting lead off for a good portion of the year, dropped to the nine hole at times, been hopping back and forth. He's in the two spot tonight, this one Fisted to center. Will it find open space? No. A speeding Fuda able to get there in time to make the play. You know what? This feels like a good time maybe to take a little stock report. Check on some of your top performers around the country. I well, would take a look at the top four. I think trying to, you know, you try to cast who the guys are going to be chosen in the draft. And we're going to get back to that in just a second. Right now we'll Take a look at Caleb Ramsey here, standing in against Reckling. 
Lays down the bunt and rolls foul. You see Houston trying all kinds of different things. I like how they try different things. You take a look at the top four players. This is, this is what I'm predicting, the top four. Garrett Cole, number one out of UCLA, who's a, do I dare say, a Boris guy. But uh, Anthony Rendon, of course, the first hitter. Danny Holson from Virginia. I think he's going to be the first left-handed pitcher taken. Unbelievable fastball, this guy. And Trevor Bauer out of UCLA. Now, Bauer out of UCLA leads the nation in strikeouts. He's a strikeout machine. And guess who's behind him? It's Holson from Virginia. So both of those guys are big picks. I think a lot, you know, Bauer is one of those guys from UCLA that I might be one of the only ones think he's going to the top four, but I think he's that kind of kid. He's really tall, he's thin, 6'5". Um, I like Sonny Gray out of Vanderbilt. Vandy, Vandy though, I mean, they're playing such good baseball. And he's a small pitcher, 5'10". I think he's pretty short, but he's got an unbelievable curveball. Big league curveball, ready to go type of guy. Those are my four picks. When you look at guys, do you look for styles or are you look at individuals? I mean, I, you know, you see those pitchers right there. You're talking about big time strikeout guys. Are you looking for a certain type of guy or are you looking at that individual, what they individually bring to the table? As we see this one, rope towards center. And Fuda with his second straight play here in the fifth. Well, some of it is, I think a lot of it when you go with that high two, not only are you looking at their makeup, but you're looking at will they, can they throw 78 innings like their body type? Um, have they thrown a lot? Are they injury prone? But you have to take into account somebody like who has those strikeouts like Bauer. Now, for example, Garrett Cole doesn't have all those same strikeouts, but he still throws 95 miles an hour, but he's a guy that's always around the plate, doesn't walk anybody. Different, those are different styles, but I think as a scout, you know you're going to have to pay out the nose for it. You're going to want someone who can who can stand up to that every day, you know, pitching every five days. And that's where I think with Rendon, there is some of that question. You know, when you talk about a hitter with some of his injuries, you start going, hmm, you know, what do we do? We take that risk. I think it's, I think he's too good and too valuable to pass. I think a team like a Pittsburgh or Seattle are going to be like, you know what? He, we got to take that. That's that guess part. He's going to be good to go in a year or two. Matt Creel, the batter. The last thing I'll say on it, too, that comes into play, you look at a guy like Garrett Cole, I think they look at guys like that and say, I think he can get in the big leagues in a year and a half or two, not five or six. They look, we need a need now. How quickly can he get there? And I think that comes into play. Creel, chopper to third, Holscher. Fires over to end the inning. A one, two, three, low pitch inning for Matthew Reckley and Rice. Houston trying to close in on the Conference USA Championship. Three nothing lead on rival Rice. Here's we head to the bottom of the fifth. And again, Houston, when you look at the RPI rankings, needs to win to get in sub 500 RPI in the mid 50s. If they win this, Conference USA will have five teams in the NCAA tournament. If they don't, it'll be four team bid for CUSA this year. You know, Southern Miss had a tough tournament. You now they came in and, and tied with Rice and boy, just could not get it going this tournament. I think in the long run, it scares them a little bit on where they're gonna go, where they're gonna sit now in their regional. And difficult came down to the final weekend of the regular season as the pitch is jerk foul by Saint, uh, Shane Holscher. Last week in Rice visiting Southern Miss. Owls take two of three to wrap up not only the top seed, but maybe hurt Southern Miss and their chances falling further with the two losses in pod play this weekend. This one fisted, still ranging back at second to make the play. Yeah, I mean, with the, with the selection day coming up here, we're talking on Monday. I think the committee meets just in a couple of days on, you know, it, people get a little tight. I mean, everybody's talking and they're, they're, they'll get a little worried and that's the stress of this last weekend. I absolutely love it. I love that everybody starts guessing and it makes it very tough on the committee and the selection committee. Derek Hamilton. Sacrifice bunt. Back of the third, his first plate appearance. Nine hole hitter for the Owls. But certainly, for some way that Rice could come back here and win 
and have things fall their way. The chance to host not only the first weekend, but the second weekend as well, really can entice your chances to make it through to Omaha, the College World Series. Well, yeah, and you know, we can't forget about too as well. Like if Houston wins and they become one of the automatic bids, Somewhere across the country, there's a team out there that does not get that automatic bid. And that's what happens when you have a team come from, like, a New Mexico that beats up on TCU. They come from out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, you know, like if Rice wins this, who's going to be an automatic bid, they win. It changes the complexity nationally as well, just on who gets in. Um, and I like that part. Houston winning the Conference USA Tournament title, 97, 2000, and 2008. Ray missing inside, the count run full at three and two. Todd Whitting, part of those first two Conference USA tournament titles with Houston, was an assistant coach on the Houston staff. Hamilton stays alive, fouling one back. And Ray has given Houston just about all that they could have expected tonight. They told us in a perfect scenario, four or five innings and he's working with one out in the fifth. Another foul back from Hamilton. Sorry, man. Nothing doing right now in the Houston bullpen. It's quiet and Ray feeling comfortable and continuing to work on the shutout. Another jam job here, but this one lifted into open spaces. One out single for Derek Hamilton. Yeah, it surprises me that there's no one up in the bullpen. They'd have somebody going. This is a jam shot. This is a good indication of the bats right here. You see this little blooper? This ball last year would have carried to the outfielder. No doubt about it. That would have been an out. Trade get. off. And again, what you talked about with teams able to pitch a little bit more effectively on the inside, we're going to see more of that than we have in years past. Again, it sounds different, too. Oh, it sounds terrible. I mean, it's, it's, it's like they break the bat. I, I love it. Like that right there sounded like he broke that bat. It's better than the, than the really loud ping. I'll take that. Keenan Cook, one for two in the evening. And that one lifted to center, but got under it. Appling there and settles in for out two. Cook got a lot of it. But right to dead center. And the first baseman for Rice up one more time. Look at Hamilton. Standing at first as Chagua stands in. Well, Chagua has had a couple of opportunities here with a runner on first to get up on the plate and pull really hard, trying to hit that big hole between first and second base. And has not even, it doesn't even look like he's trying to do that. And I don't know if I could be wrong. I know he hit one like a little weak, weak ball the other way, he got jammed a little bit. I think as in this situation, especially as a two hitter, it's important to be a very good situational hitter. And part of that is learning, hey, I got to get up on the dish a little bit, get close to the plate, and try to pull really hard. And you see the pitchers, they're not, you know, they know what they're doing. They're going to try to pitch away knowing that. And again, that situational hitting has been one thing Houston has been so good at, really trying to work around the plate. They don't just get comfortable in one spot in the batter's box. They move around a little bit, you know, depending on the situation. And you know, the sophomore 75 hits of the year, make it 76. Rips that one to left center. And Hamilton able to scamper across to third. So first and third with two out here for right. Ball's up in the zone, smokes it the other way. Good base running on first base, running first to third. There's no hesitation. The ball's right in front of him the whole way. Hustling in there. Hansley came up, but not able to get the throw in time. And Hamilton at third. Base runner at first, and Rendon at the plate.
to short. Throw over from Jensen. Safe is the call. One scores. And Chagua able to go up to third base. Well, Rendon able to keep that alive. And Houston watches Rice get on the board. Well, this has been the issue right here with Jensen all season long. This is a routine ground ball that he sits way back on, and he's really lazy on this play. Not to be very hard on him, but he just is. Watch him sit back. He could get over in front of this ball and flip it to second, but he chooses to take it on the backhand side, making a very difficult long throw. Again, that comes with experience. He made a relatively easy play into a very tough one. Now his second error, four in this game, two on each team. And it leads to the run. Rendon out of the box. And he was at full stride. And now one in for Rice, first and third. Still two away. Rattery through the wickets of Morehouse at third. Another run in for Rice. And suddenly it's a one-run game. This will be an error as well, going right through the wickets. Rattery absolutely smokes this ball. There's no question about how hard he hits it. Again, offensively, he's been nails. Trying to take advantage of some uncharacteristic Houston mistakes. Well, Todd Whitting out to talk with his pitcher, and there is activity now in the Houston bullpen. Pushes it through Morehouse, and suddenly this Houston team cruising along. And a couple of hits, a couple of errors, and suddenly it's a one-run game. You see the activity there in the Houston bullpen. That's Jordan Lewis, junior lefty, who's limbering in the pen. And Todd Whitting opting to leave in Ray for now. I think he has to. He didn't have anybody up in the pen. And the left-handed hitting Craig Manuel standing in to face him. Rodgers on first and second with two out. Already two in here in the fifth for Rice. And this is where the recent history and dominance for the Owls against the Cougars might start to creep into the minds of Houston here. Here they come, because it's happened so many times recently. Yeah. Manuel steps out. And they play five times a year. The last two years, Rice has won all five. And they also beat Houston in the Conference USA tournament last year as Ray fakes the throw back to second. They didn't just beat Houston last year. They annihilated them. It was 24 to 3 oh. in the conference tournament. And again, they've lost 14 straight and 19 of 20. Recently, two rice. And the chance here to deny the Owls the conference tournament title and win it themselves to get to the NCAA tournament. Manual able to lay off. Counted 2 0. somebody that just had your number for a while somewhere along the line? Uh, you know, when I, when I was at college, Washington State, which is an easy pick, but the Cougars back then in the Pac-10 and the Northern Pac-10 were dominant, and we just we could not beat those guys at their place. But after that, not really. In the big leagues, there wasn't really that one team. Players switched teams so often. Now there was many, you know, pitchers that owned certain guys, but nothing like what we're seeing here. Three and one here to Manuel. 
Two on, already two in. Again, situational hitting, 3-1 count. He's gonna get a fastball, get on the plate a little bit, throw that bad head out in front. This one lifted to center. Appling though, able to track it down. But some damage done. Rice gets the goose egg off the board, makes it a one-run game here in Mississippi. Mississippi Conference USA final on CBS Sports Network. Jason App, former big league shortstop Kevin Stocker alongside the Cougars and the Owls toe to toe for the title here in Houston one better than their crosstown rivals as we head to the top of the sixth. And a new pitcher coming on for Rice. Tyler Duffy will be on. And to replace starter Matthew Reckling, who threw 96 pitches in his five innings of work. Struck out seven, walked two, and allowed three runs. And here's the numbers on Duffy. 6'3", sophomore out of Bel Air High School in Houston. Eight and one record. And did the job in relief a couple of days ago against Memphis. Pitched four to third innings of relief, scattered four singles throughout that span, and picked up win number eight of the year. One of those games that Rice came back in. First pitch swing from Kokonos, lifted to right. Easy play there. Now, think, Ryan Lewis. I think that's amazing. He's got eight wins with only one start. He's got eight wins, and that talks about right there. Rice getting through, they're, they're not, he's not coming in with the lead all the time. I mean, he's having to work every time he comes in. A lot of innings. Yeah, that trend this weekend, Rice has continued it. They've been outscored first three innings in the four games this weekend, 15 to three, and they've outscored their foes innings four through nine this weekend, 19 to four. Wow. Chase Jensen, the batter. One for two with a single in the first. And down on strikes in the fourth. Fouls one back and out of play. Well, Duffy certainly isn't afraid to run it up there at 90 92. And he just rares back and throws it. I like the pace. His pace of his windup is good. Missing. Jensen trying to get something going. And fouls one back, count remains one and two. You came up the inning after an error. Did you feel that urge to try to get it right Always. back and do something big? Always, which was one of the, another hard thing you had to learn was you can't get it back in one swing. Your mistake's out there. So what happens is sometimes you try to do it all again and you compound it with another mistake. And a big time off speed pitch there from Duffy. And Jensen a strikeout victim for the second time. Nice hit fastball, it's a nice little curveball. Jensen knows it. Joe Ansley. Coming to the plate with two outs. And he scored one of those runs of the two that Houston played it in the fourth. After getting on via a walk. Also down on strikes back of the first. See that uniform? Well soiled so far. Remember he stole the base and then advanced a third of the wild pitch and then came in. On the air and the triple from Cody Morehouse. Oh, 
grounded weakly to second. Rattery able to make the play. So a perfect inning of relief so far for Tyler Duffy. Houston still up one. Houston got a run of the first, a couple more of the fourth, and right now the lead holding up 3-2 over Rice here in the Conference USA Tournament Final. Headed to the bottom of the sixth. Time now for our icy hot pitching performance. And Jared Ray getting some help from his defense. We're talking about a guy, remember, he hasn't pitched for two weeks. He's been off a little bit of, of, of coming off of an injury, but he's been dynamite tonight. We were, we're looking, you know, three, four innings, and here we are going into the bottom of the sixth, and he's still out there. He's been phenomenal tonight. He's been what Houston needed. That was a good starting pitcher tonight. He's been great. See, five innings so far, six hits, the two runs, two Ks, just one walk, 73 pitches earlier this year. And a start against Houston. He got roughed up. Only lasted five at a third. Gave up six hits and seven runs. And again, that happened to just about everybody on the Houston staff. So they got dinged up by Rice. And the Owls sweeping the series again this year from the Cougar. That one missed. Quick 2-0 and count to Ryan Lewis. He has been the hottest hitter of this Conference USA Tournament for Rice. Seven of 12 so far in the four game set this weekend. The mystery, the mystery for me tonight with these Rice hitters has been that there have been some 2-0, 3-1 counts. Quite a few for Rice. And all of them, they're fouling off. They're just not getting very good swings on them. Lifted to center, Appling, one gone. Wayne Graham looking on. See what his team's done against foes here in inning six throughout the year. Well, that's a great stat and graphic, but I guarantee if you show Wayne, again, he might use that same word. That's aggravating. <laughs> that's what he used, right? I mean, no coach likes to always have to be coming from behind. That's not what you want to do. And got win number 900 this year. And it came against Houston. Game cross town at Cougar Field. And able to celebrate one of only three Division I coaches with 900 plus wins. Celebrating that milestone, the home game after that. They got a lot of taped congratulation remarks from some of his former players that have gone on to the big leagues as Fuda smacks one of the gap in right center and it will be a stand-up double. So Fuda on second with one away here the sixth. Look at Fuda again. The ball's lifted in the air. I haven't heard his name a lot tonight, a little bit on defense, but this ball slices away from the center field. It is a nice hustle around first base. And that's another ball that just does not carry. You don't see a lot of balls at the warning track. Big park. Wayne Graham looking on. So he talked about it, though. If you, if you catch it right, it'll still go. With these new bats this year. Up the middle off the bat of Holscher. Jensen. Able to make the routine play that time as Fuda moves up to third with two away. So the great players that have played under Wayne Graham all videotaping some things. You got guys like Lance Berkman, Paul Yanish, Reds, David Ardsman, the Mariners, and Andy Pettit, who we had at the junior college ranks at San Jacinto. All giving their credit, certainly a, an emotional night for Coach. When you look at the wins, he's got more in his time here, in his 20 years, than Rice had in their first yeah. 60, 70 years combined. You know, he really brought in a different atmosphere, different attitude to Rice, saying, hey, yes, we're, it's a pretty small school, very tough to get into, and they brought an attitude, no, we can still win at baseball, and I think he's been great, obviously, by the numbers, and the kids really respond to him. 
He has some coaches that are very dedicated to him as well. You know, five junior college national titles in a six year span of the 80s and 90s at San Jacinto. Didn't know if he'd get a shot at the D1 level. Has, and Rice is into a powerhouse. And the Owls able to tie it up. The hit from Hamilton scores Fuda, and it's 3-3. Well, here they come. Into that sixth inning, and all of a sudden, they start putting a few things together. Starting with the double from Fuda. A little over-under shot, over the infield, under the outfield. Pete Rose made that famous. It'll work for Hamilton. Back to back singles in the last two innings and the RBI ties us up at three and top of the order again. Keenan Cook up for the fourth time tonight. Now we go back to the game plan here for Jared Ray at sitting around four or five innings is what they were hoping for. They let him go six. He's pitching fairly well, but sometimes you, you, know, you, you don't know what goes on in the dugout. Does, is he in there fighting? Hey, I want to go back out, trying to talk himself into it. And I don't know if, if uh, Todd got out of his game plan a little bit, head coach. Let him go a little bit too long. Of course, you can always second guess it now, but. O2 here to Cook. Trying to get him to fish outside. The batter. Stays there, and it's one and two. This Rice team has won or shared 16 straight conference championships. They've either won the regular season title or the conference crown the last 16 years, and that spans the old Southwest Conference, the WAC, and Conference USA. And a look at his reaction to that last pitch. Well, I'm not sure if he's upset because he had a steal, and my guess is that the guys are just a little late. They're not, some of them aren't taking great swing. You see a ground ball to second base. And the play made. Still to Kokonos. And now we're tied at three. Houston's lead at 1.3 runs has vanished. Three in the last two innings for Rice has tied it up here. The Conference USA Tournament Final. 3-3 three, three to the top of the seventh. And Cody Morehouse fouling back the first pitch of the second inning of work for Tyler Duffy in relief of Matthew Recklin. Morehouse delivered the biggest blow of the game for the Cougars. An RBI triple in the fourth, and he scored on the throwing error by Rattery as he was able to circle the bases and deliver two runs on the play. Ooh. Definitely went. I think that's the right call. A lot of people might be asking why Duffy isn't a starter, and I just think he's just so good at mid relief. See a high fastball. I think I catch up to that ball. Second strikeout for Duffy. Since coming on at the start of the sixth inning. Another stock report, a national stock report. National, how about New Mexico? Coming through and beating TCU, They're, they were a six seed going into the tournament and won that tournament for them. Gonzaga, San Francisco deciding this weekend. Both tied going in for the championship there. And you look at Oregon State, and I gotta tell you, they are tied atop the Pac-10 right now with UCLA going into today. And I'm sitting there looking at Oregon State. And it just baffles me when I see how good their program is. And you look at all of their stats on, a, on the Pac-10 level. They are like in the middle of everything. Strikeouts, batting average, they're like fifth and sixth in every stat, and yet they're always in the top of that league. And it just amazes me how whether it's, they're just so well coached. I think they're very patient hitting school. They're pretty good pitching. They're pretty good on defense. They're pretty good hitting, you know what I mean? But they're always winning. And that's one thing when we talked about confidence and big picture, they have got that out in Oregon State. So losses for them, they just, you know, we're not gonna do it. It just baffles me how they do that. Especially against a powerhouse like Arizona State, who's right there with them. Arizona State uh, is playing this weekend as well against UCLA, those two squads. So, good Pac-10 race. Ground ball from Cannon. Handled easily by Hamilton at short. And there's two gone here in the seventh. But you would know that feeling 
it's that confident level and your team wears it every day. Right. You certainly had that when you arrived in the big leagues in 93 with Philadelphia. Well, I, I had to learn what it was like in Philly. They had it. Right. And I joined that team and it was like, oh, this is what it's like when you're down seven runs in the seventh and you're not out of it. The guys truly believed they were going to come back and win. I think that's what a team like an Oregon State, a Rice at times has. When they get down, they know they're going to be able to come back. When you learned it, did you have to learn it by action being there, or were you able to pick it up from the rest no, of the guys? No, you pick it up from the rest of the guys. You definitely do. I mean, I was a young pup on that team in, in, with Philadelphia Phillies, and those veteran guys, that's where you, you learn that. That's why it's tough when you have a freshman squad, when you have a lot of young kids. We, we did a Notre Dame game just you know a weekend ago, and they have a lot of young kids that are still learning that feeling, not taking one loss on Friday into the next day. Here's Ryan Still, and one of the returners for Houston, Todd Whitting, trying to rebuild, retool this program, bringing in some guys to restock this year to get dealing with plenty of injuries. Still rounding out over the first, and the relief pitcher Duffy covering to record the out, 3-3 to the bottom of the seventh. To lift the trophy and call yourself champion is the dream of every college student athlete. And Georgia Southern has won the national championship. Don't miss any of the action at NCAA.com. Yeah! Your home for all 88 NCAA championships, including over 300 live webcasts, highlights, scores, stats, and more. Yeah! NCAA.com, where champions live. 3-3 in the bottom of the seventh Conference USA Baseball Championship from Pearl, Mississippi. Glad to have you along for this conference tournament final tonight. Jason Knapp along with Kevin Stocker and kind of what we expected with Rice falling behind early and playing come from behind baseball. They've done it all weekend and started to do it again here tonight. They have and, and we've seen a few errors on the Rice side. I didn't expect it from the Houston side. That, those have really come into play and that's been a big a big deal tonight. But you know it always comes down to the last three innings. At least it does for Rice and that's what we've got tonight. I think it's great. It's a great game. This is what you want in your championship game. But again Houston needs a win to get the automatic bid to have any shot to go to the NCAA tournament. Rice can get it at large. The Owls still playing for seeding and hosting rights for the first maybe the first and second weekend if they can get one of those top eight national seeds long shot right now they need some other things to happen across the country but most of all they need to win tonight to have a shot at one of those top eight seeds right now after being down three they've tied it up trying to get something going here in the seventh 2-0 the count we were talking nationally too in that stock report in the West Coast Conference with Gonzaga and San Francisco and Gonzaga pulled out a win today. So now they are tied still going into tomorrow's game. Remember for that conference, there are three conferences in the nation that just the winners go. There's no tournament and that's one of those conferences. That's a big deal out there. It's a lot of fun. Same with the Pac-10 is like that as well. You like a conference tournament setting, or would you rather no. send your regular season I, I, champion? I guess I, well, you know what I was going to say this, but I like conference tournaments fine. I wish that they were just four or six teams. I don't like having the whole the whole conference or more than eight teams. That's just me. Um, I do one thing I do like about having the whoever wins the, the conference go is that every game means I'm all the way to the end, and I do like that. But I also understand they're trying to get more kids a chance, take a look at like a New Mexico who won. So I get that as well. Big win for the Lobos in the Mountain West. And Ray still chugging along here into the seventh. And they told us at the start four or five innings would be a dream scenario. And right now he's done a solid job here into his seventh inning of work. Foul back by Chagua. Well, if you think about it, the runs that he did give up last inning, errors. You know, a couple of back-to-back -back errors. He gave up a bloop base hit. It's not like he's giving it up or anything like that. Now, what will happen, though, is sometimes the Rice hitters by this time of the game start to adjust. Up the middle, Jensen, diving play, throws it over and makes the play. 
Well, a couple of errors for the Houston shortstop, but coming up with the tough stop there. And he got the first out of the seventh. It's always nice to kind of redeem yourself. He does a nice jump up the middle. The greatest part about this is he hops up to his feet and gets right over the top when he makes. Watch when he throws this ball. It's not from the side. He likes to throw kind of low. He gets right up on top. Well, pretty much what we described, making the spectacular look routine for Jensen there at short. Anthony Rendon, the batter for Rice. He is 0 for 2, did reach base on one of the two errors by Jensen back in the fifth. Six homers, 35 runs batted in. Now his numbers a year ago were just out of sight. Hit 394, 26 homers, 85 runs batted in. But a strikeout victim here as Ray gets another one. He gets Rendon for the second time tonight. Two gone here in the seventh, and here's Michael Rattery. He hit a base hit back in the second, also reached on an error in the fifth. And a called strike. You know, Wayne Graham telling us before the game, his numbers hitting-wise have really rocketed up last month. They made an adjustment to his batting swing. They talked about his hands. In fact, he was talking about how it kind of came to him in the middle of the night, actually. He was talking about his hands, how he was choking the bat with his top hand. We call it when you're just squeezing it, and you're just squeezing it so hard, it will actually slow your swing down. You have to be relaxed. We used to call it a relaxed tension, where you want it in your fingertips to the point where you still have control of it and some power, but loose. Your hands have to be loose. I used to always shake my fingers a little bit prior to hitting. In fact, you look at guys like Bobby Abreu in and, and the big leagues, they're barely hanging on to the bat. They loosened them up a little bit and got that bat head get it, you know, faster through the zone. And has really picked up his hitting. Certainly his work hit safely in 24 of Rice's final 25 regular season games. Been lights out this weekend, but can't reach safely here in the seventh. Rice down one, two, three, and we're still tied at three. Three, three here. The end of the eighth Conference USA Championship between Houston and 15th ranked Rice. How about we take a peek at tonight's Golden Corral hungriest player on the field, Derek Hamilton. A couple of hits, an RBI, and a run score for the Owls as they've come back from three down here to tie things up in this tournament final. And there is Hamilton in his position there at short. A little, uh, little wear on that hat. A little. He's not willing to give that up. Players get really personal when you start talking about their equipment. Well, Tyler Duffy has had the right stuff so far since coming on in relief. Two scoreless so far retired all six men he's faced. There's a look at the cap of Hamilton at short. You know, first you've had the guys now that let that go and just let the salt and dirt and yep. everything build up, and now we've got the, the flat, flat brim. Yep. The flat bill is here to stay. Unfortunately, it's here. I've tried hard on my son. Can't do it. He'll get hats that have the bend and iron them flat. He's 12. What are you doing? Yeah. Comes and goes. The bend was the thing. Now the flat. It'll come back and forth. Appling. Slaps one to third. Tough play. And Holscher makes it look easy. One gone here at the top of the eighth. Caleb Ramsey will be the batter. 0 for 3 so far tonight for Houston. Well, Duffy is dealing right now. He just, it seems to me like he has complete control of what he's trying to do up there and where he's trying to throw it. He's got a good, quick rhythm. It's huge to get the leadoff hitter in the last three innings. 
I say that because right at this point, it's, it basically is a new game. You get to seven, eight, nine, it's a new game. So you get guys on, there's gonna be bunting, there's gonna be hit and runs. It just kind of changes how the coaches have to coach toward the end of the game. Duffy low for ball one. Ramsey coming in as the top hitter in the Conference USA tournament, hitting 600 the first three games, and that one a loud foul down the line. He had a big RBI triple to tie the game against Southern Miss in the eighth. Forced extra innings, and Houston going on to win in 14. Just missed, sending it out. He's one of the Cougar players that experienced a Conference USA Tournament title. Part of that team in 2008 that won it all. Count now one and two. And Duffy gets him on strike. Maya Houston, they have Reckling to start the game with the huge curveball. Take a look at this pit. Bam, that thing just falls out of there. I mean, that is a perfect curveball. You're not going to even, you're not going to hit that pitch. As a hitter with two strikes, you have to chase it. But a good curveball like that is, a, is really an unhittable pitch. It's when they hang it, so nice pitch. Now Duffy has struck out the second batter he's faced in all three innings of work so far. They would like to try to make it nine straight retired here if he can set down Matt Creel. Creel, one for three with a single back in the first. Watch his head. Watch where he's looking. He's looking straight out there. I'm not sure he really tracked that ball. I mean, he certainly, I think, was just totally guessing on a fastball in and was just swinging at where he thought the ball was going to be. And swings and connects here. Able to slap a base hit to right. And a two-out runner for Houston. Good adjustment right there after that first swing. Little counseling from Coach Stocker, and he got things straight down. Yeah. Well, after that first swing, it almost just looked like he was completely guessing. And with Creel at first, Duffy will take a peek at MP. Kokodo standing in, MP, Michael Paul, if you were wondering. Ball one from Duffy. I think it's important for Houston, even with two, two outs in this situation, work the count. Now it'd be great to get a run put up there, but if nothing else, get through the bottom of the lineup a little ways so that you can at least get to the ninth inning with some of the guys at the top of the lineup getting up there. Now, I know that sounds like, well, you want to play for a run now. Absolutely you do. I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying the guys that get up there be a little bit more patient, be a little bit more selective. Pretty accurate so far from Duffy. 23 strikes, 32 pitches to this point. And another one right there. Two and one the count to Kokonos. Houston with a run of the first, two more of the fourth. Rice with two in the fifth. And a third run in the sixth to even things up. Kokono stays alive. Again, getting the signs at third is Kokonos. Creel at first. Out, out. And lifted foul and out of play down the right field line. Todd Whitting knows his team has not had a lot of success against Rice, and he said, hey, it's pretty simple. It's not mental, it's ability said at this point, they've got better players than we do. But yesterday, after their final pod game, 
He said will can beat skill. Especially in a one game setting. Can they do it and get through the NCAA tournament? Well, in that sequence, Duffy better. His second strike out of the inning and his fourth so far in three innings of relief. Kokonos chasing and the score still tied. Where can you find Division II's best teams? He is the NCAA Division II national champ. On the court. On the field. In the pool. In the classroom. And in the community. There are thousands of reasons why thousands of student athletes choose Division II. Watch them play all season long, only on CBS Sports Network. In recent history, in Conference USA, Rice has done a lot of damage. Back-to-back -back conference tournament titles in 06 and 07. Houston grabbed one in 2008 before the Owls made it three in four years. Last year, Southern Miss got it done. Who will it be this year in 2011? We're in the process of finding out right now here in Pearl, Mississippi, side of the 2011 Conference USA Baseball Tournament. Jason Knapp, along with former Shortstop for the Philadelphia Phillies, Tampa Bay Rays, and others. Kevin Stocker, glad you're along for the ride here on CBS Sports Network. 3-3 between these neighbors and rivals in Houston. Near the bottom of the eighth. And Craig Manuel, the catcher for the Owls, starting things off. Manuel to right field. Ramsey going back and able to make the play few paces in front of the warning track and right. And Ryan Lewis will be the batter now for Rice. Over 100 pitches now for Ray, who again, we were told, can only go maybe three, four innings. And right now he's working into the eight. Well, I don't know what he's saying in the dugout, but he's saying the right things in there to can, you know, <laughs> throw me back out there. But I, I have to say, he's pitching very well. And like you, you kind of looked at before, they've got arms ready down there. But, you know, he's battle ready. He's a veteran guy. He's been in this position before. I, you know, let him go. And again, the runs put together in the fifth, unearned with the errors behind him defensively and he has done the job to this point of silencing some pretty potent bats from Rice for the most part. Lewis has a single on the night. And a called strike. Yeah, we see that last fa fastball running up there about 85 miles an hour. And he's had a couple run up there at 91. And a couple, of, and that's what he does. He really mixes his speed as you see ball four. And the walk there earned by Lewis. Jordan Manisto Jr. is warming in the bullpen for Houston. And as you look at the pitch count, 106 now for Ray. This might be it for him. I, I just can't imagine they're gonna go much longer. I think at some point you're gonna have to change it up a little bit just to give a different look to Rice. He's he's done so much already to this point. That's what this visit's about, kind of slow him down a little bit. And you check the pitch count there. It is 108. And Cannon, the catcher, able to kill some time. And now Todd winning on his way out uh, to make the change. And it will be Jordan Manisto, the new pitcher for Houston. And the pitcher, another two sport star looming in this game for Houston. We'll explain his background and how he got to be part of the Cougar staff. Coming up, assuming that Whiting makes the move. Excuse me, Whitting makes the move. Manisto was ready to come through the gate. And enter the gate, he's standing there waiting. 
and has not gotten the signal. He was all ready to go. We thought he was ready to go. And now Whitting opting to leave in Ray for the moment. Well, I'm stumped. That was a good fake. It was a good fake by Ray. The catcher go out, he went out. I'm a little surprised that they left him in. I really am. I think he's done his job to this point. I think it's probably time to go to the pen. But again, he's got confidence. He's going to let him ride. And Fuda, last time up, was able to smoke a double. Throw over to first, and Lewis getting back. See if Ray can work out of this jam. Swing there. And gets away. Thought initially it may have been a foul ball. I think that's what Todd Whitting is thinking. Is it hopped away from Cannon? And right now, Lewis able to advance to second base. Well, take a look. He's protecting the runner here. It did not hit his bat. And it's almost like there was a hit and run on him. Oh, no, he wasn't even close to hitting that. I think the hop, the big hop off the yeah. turf and off of Cannon made everybody think, at least on the Houston side of things, that may have been a foul ball, but right. the replay clearly showing it was not. So Rice suddenly with a runner at second, one away, and Fuda with a chance to deliver the go-ahead run. And one of those Rice players who's missed some time this year with injury, coming back, getting into a groove, and trying to lift Rice to another Conference USA Tournament title. One and one the count for the junior from Katy, Texas. Wings through that pitch. Ray battling back one and two. When you haven't pitched for as long as he has, you see he's got seven innings tonight, but it's been two weeks. What happens is, you know, you can throw as many bullpens as you want. You're still not in game shape, game ready. What happens is you, you tire quickly. Five, six innings, he's doing fine. Seventh inning, he's doing okay. Then all of a sudden, it can hit you where, boy, my arm's a little tired. It doesn't hurt necessarily but it gets harder to hit your spots. You can see there where the catcher cannon set up on the inside part of the plate and he threw a strike on the outside part of the plate. Got a strike there and rings up Fuda. That's a big out right there. Now he has an open base at first base. He can try to get ahead. He's been calling this strike on the outside corner. That's a great pitch. Good time for the fourth strike out of the game for Ray. See the breakdown. Dozen ground outs as he's been able to keep the ball down and really limit damage done by Rice offensively. First pitch strike to Shane Holscher. One of the things that we talked with the pitching coach for Houston before the game was he talked about one of his pitches just being a regular two-seamer, but he said, you know, he doesn't do anything special with it, but it's very deceptive because it will run back a little bit, and we're seeing him work the outside part of the plate with that, and I think it's confusing these rice hitters. I think they just can't believe that that ball is coming back for a strike, but they are. Those are strikes. Holscher fouls that one back 0-2. See if he's, he's got a ways to pitch here, something outside. I would throw it out there six, seven inches and see if you can get him to chase it. Try to run it back over, but not for strike. Guy that's hitting under 300 overall in the year, but almost 500 this year against Houston. Can he do it to the Cougars one more time? Foul straight back. No, he got away with the pitch there. He was trying to get it outside. He left it up. 
Up and in the zone. When you're up 0-2, you've got to get it out there. Hamilton, who's done a lot of damage tonight. For Rice waiting on that. Ray with the go-ahead run at second. 0-2 pitch, two outs. Trying to get out of the inning and keep the score tied. Oshler stands out and now ready to dive back in. And Manisto thought he was coming on and waiting patiently if needed to warm again. Just missed. in the outside corner. This is a perfect spot outside. Try to bring it, see if you can get him to chase. That's what we were talking about. I would just live out there. I'd keep doing the same thing. Cannon trying to frame it and could not get the call from home plate umpire Perry Costello. The one two. Chop in the hole at short. Jensen throws over, makes the play, and Ray does it again for Houston. Super performance back from injury for the Houston Riley tied going to the ninth. College baseball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Icy Hot. Goes on Icy to dull the pain, then gets hot to relax it away. By Golden Corral, help yourself to happiness. And by Franklin Templeton Investments, gain from our perspective. Ninth inning here, the 2011 Conference USA Baseball Championship. And the outcome still in doubt. Tied at three between Houston and Rice. The Cougars need the win to get the automatic bid to get to the NCAA Tournament. Rice will have an at-large bid waiting if needed, but they would like to win to ensure hosting privileges next weekend for regionals and possibly one of the top eight seeds and the chance to host super regionals should they advance through the first weekend and really enhance their chance of trying to get back to the College World Series for the eighth time. Chase Jensen is the batter and pretty gaudy numbers went leading off an inning for Houston. Pop back and out of play. Counted one and two. Duffy just firing fastballs. I mean, it's just not getting tricky with these guys. Good rips by Jensen. I like the fact that he's being aggressive. A lot of times when you tie late in the game, I've always believed in taking a strike, but Duffy's throwing strikes like crazy. Well, then get out there and take your rips. And he took a rip there. And it's a strikeout victim. And Duffy has looked strong since coming in to start the sixth. Well, he got three good cuts. He didn't get cheated. And you got to go up there late in the game like that. That's what you want to do. Duffy's dealing right now. Five Ks right now in three and a third innings of work. Here's Joe Ansley. And tips one foul back to the netting. Ansley, 0 for 2 with a walk and a run score. Another called strike. And Duffy, when that curve is working right, it is a leg buckler. You hear a lot of moaning here. Is it a strike? Boy, that's a little low. Nice job of framing right there by Mendes. See how we just kind of caught it and didn't, didn't really do much with it? Just a little recoil. Trying to set him up outside. And didn't get that call. One and two. Charlie O'Brien played against him in the big leagues. was one of the best at framing pitches. He was able to do it by, rather than moving the glove, he would lean his body out, catch it, and kind of lean back with his body. His glove would never move. He could, he could get a couple inches on those pitches. Ansley waving at strike three. 
not fair. That pitch just isn't fair. 92 mile an hour fastball with that big hammer. <laughs> trying to battle, trying to hang in there. Duffy settled in. Here's Cody Morehouse. As the biggest swat of the game, RBI triple back in the fourth. Look at the numbers on Duffy. Pretty stout. And another called strike, it's 0-2. He is working quickly and working effectively. Yes, with good command. He's putting it right where he wants it. Morehouse fighting to stay in. Todd Whitting talked about his performance the other night with the three hits and the work and relief. Great effort from him. One of the best he's seen. His team battling hard here, but three strikeouts from Tyler Duffy. A perfect inning of K's for the Rice reliever. Houston down one, two, three. Here on the night. Houston failing to score the top of the ninth, so Rice with a chance to win it here in the bottom of the ninth inning. 3-3 the score in the Conference USA Baseball Championship for 2011. One of these teams will win the Conference USA Tournament title for the fourth time, tying Tulane for the most postseason titles in CUSA all-time in baseball. And Derek Hamilton leading things off here for Rice. And that one, an excuse me swing foul ball. Now I talked last inning about going out free swing and throwing a lot of strikes. You have a pitcher now in Ray who's been out there, you know, every inning, the whole game, probably getting a little tired. You're the home team as well, so all you need is one run. I think you need to take a strike, and that's a good case there. He is out there swinging, probably should have taken a strike. Try to get on base. Because if you're the visiting team, it's a little bit, a little bit different. Your strategy, home team, get somebody on, all you need is that one run. Now Ray approaching 120 pitches on the night. Todd Whitting, his coaching staff over there. We'll see how long they go with him. Manisto was up before. We thought he was coming in a couple innings ago. And there is pitch 120, fouled away by Hamilton. and Lewis both up of the pen sophomore right excuse me junior righty Manisto and Lewis the lefty and Ray well out of the zone there count now even at two and two First three innings didn't score. And now they have one to start off the ninth inning. And Todd Whitting coming out now to chat with Ray. And no signal yet. We don't dare say anything. Last time I was wrong. I've got to believe he's going to be bringing in his lefty. Looks to be the move. Yep. The righty. And Manisto 
will get the call. New pitcher coming on for Houston and a little backstory for him. We'll explain in a moment. A great round of applause for the big righty, Jared Ray, after going eight innings into the ninth. His first work in a couple of weeks and a healthy round of applause from his teammates and the Houston fans here in Mississippi after his great effort to keep Houston in this Conference USA Championship. Now the reliever will be Jordan Manisto, junior from Westlake Village, California, came to Houston to play football, a kicker on the Cougar team, and this year decided to walk on to the baseball team. He knocked at the door of their pitching coach, Jack Resson, and said, hey, you know, I'd like to try out. And I'm sure a lot of kids in college have knocked on the doors of coaches and said, I'd love to play for your team. Gave him a little workout session in the pen. A little rusty, a little raw, but they liked what they saw. They brought him back. He was a little bit better. And suddenly, he's a member of the Houston team and has done great things, leads them in appearances this year. No bigger appearance than right now. Coming in with a man on first and nobody out. What a great story. He got the win against East Carolina on Wednesday. Five innings of relief and did the job there for the Cougars. This is 24th appearance of the year. Four and three with an ERA under four and four saves right now. Just trying to hold the fort here against Rice and send us to extra innings. Got eight career field goals for Kevin Sumlin and the Houston football team. He would love three outs right now for Todd Whitting and the Cougar baseball team and got one there as Cook cannot lay the sacrifice down, popped up and snagged by Morehouse at third. A fundamental miscue there for the out. When I'm not quite sure, you know, he's trying to bunt this ball down the third baseline, which the guy used to teach it all the time, get to third base, and, and we never did that. When we, as soon as we got to the big leagues, all they ever said was, look, don't worry about that sack bunt, just kill it. Just kill it in the right spot. It doesn't matter who you bunt it to if you kill the ball out in front of the plate. Hardest thing for a lefty is to try to bunt it to the third baseman. Tough break for Rice. So now Hamilton still at first with one gone. I'm Jade, I'm Jade. Chagua the batter. He is one for four tonight. Single, couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Wayne Graham, after a little conversation with Keaton Cook, back offering encouragement for his first baseman. This could be two. Gets one second. Double play. Manisto in in relief. And the Cougars out of the jam. Extra innings here in the Conference USA Championship in Mississippi. Always good to have a little energy when you're going extra innings. And we are dancing into the 10th here at the Conference USA Championship between Houston and Rice. Look at how we got here. Jordan Manisto on in relief with a runner on. Gets the double play to end the threat and send us on to extra innings. And Houston, a team that needs this win to extend its season and get to the NCAA tournament, jumps out of the dugout to greet their defensive unit and relief pitcher. And they've set it to the top of the 10th. Todd Whitting trying to beat Wayne Graham and Rice. Now the Owls know they're headed to the NCAA tournament, but Houston has to win here to keep going. The Owls two and five in extra inning affairs this year. John Cannon start things off, or starts things off rather against Tyler Duffy here in the 10th inning. And Duffy has been virtually unhittable. His first four innings of relief facing only one over the minimum. Retired 12 of 13 batters, just a single to Matt Creel, that's it. And make it two singles. Cannon smokes one to left and is on to start off the 10th inning for Houston. There's that leadoff hitter again. How important has that been for the game? It's just going to be a fastball left over the middle of the plate. Nice little swing. Same situation as the last inning. I'm sure we're going to get a bunt. 
now conversation time here for Houston. Todd Whitting out. Third base coach Stephen Trout comes over. And they're going to chat here with Still as Wayne Graham comes out to talk to Tyler Duffy. And some action in the Rice bullpen as well. And that is Austin Kibitza, who's up, told Wayne Graham he could go tonight. That's the Conference USA freshman of the year in the bullpen. Normally a starter was roughed up in his first outing in the Conference USA tournament, the loss for Rice against UAB. But he said to Wayne Graham he could give him an inning or two if needed. The punt foul by Still. And another lefty trying to lay one down. You can see the pained expression on your face a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, you can see me going nuts in here. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. They never change from when you're nine to when you're this age to when you're in the big leagues. And just bunting. Sometimes we make it harder than it has to be. This ball just needs to be put out somewhere in front of the plate. It doesn't have to be toward third. Just get it on the grass and kill it. Now the cat and mouse game begins. Laid down, dragged to first. Cannon gets to second, so the sacrifice is good from Still. You know, baseball is this game of percentages. John Vukovic taught me that. That if you play the percentages, 95% of the time, or maybe even more, if you bunt the ball to the first baseman, they will not throw it anywhere but first base. It's just the percentage. It's not doesn't mean they're not going to, but just get it down, give yourself a chance. And this is the right play by the first base. Get the out. Do not compound by making trying to make a great play. Just get the out, let your pitcher do the rest. Come on, upper. So Cannon at second and Landon Appling. Facing Tyler Duffy. That one low in the dirt. It is a strike. And a good block by Manuel. It was a curveball here. Now Appling on second base. He needs to be on full red alert. He needs to be able to read the pitch out of the pitcher's hand. I'm talking about the guy that's on the runner on second base because any opportunity he can get a great jump and take a shot at third, he's got to do it. See the lead there by Cannon. Appling. Able to lift this one to shallow right field. Ryan Lewis there, not deep enough for Cannon to tag and advance the third, so he remains at second. Now with two out. And the batter will be Caleb Ramsey. Wearing the collar so far tonight. 0 for 4, a couple of strikeouts, and Wayne Graham going to bring in the lefty to face the lefty Ramsey. Going with the percentage play, and they'll go to the bullpen. 2008 Houston had some magic at the Conference USA Championship game against Marshall in New Orleans. Brian Pounds, MVP, at his seventh RBI of the tournament in the third inning. And freshman shortstop Blake Kelso, some great defense as Houston got the win and the tournament title over Marshall, their third all time. Chance to win another one here and threatening right now with two outs in the top of the 10th and a runner on second against Rice. And Wayne Graham going to the bullpen and Tony Singrani is in, 6'5 senior out of the Chicago area in Illinois has been fantastic this weekend. 12 saves on the season, including two of them this weekend. He got his 11th save, getting the final five outs against Memphis on Thursday, and then got save number 12 against UCF. He came UCF slugger Jonathan Griffin to end it. So Wayne Graham going with his talented lefty to come on in here and try to get a big out against the big time lefty bat from Houston, Caleb Ramsey. And Ramsey, 600 coming in to the tournament 
or to this tournament final so far in the tournament, but 0 for 4 tonight. And takes call strike one from Singrani. Singrani was a starter in years past. Coaching staff changing his dynamic, his motion, and a lot of his setup in the offseason. And it's done wonders for him after he's moved to the pen as he looks back, candidate second. Guy had an ERA of eight and a half last year as a starter, and now he's whittled it way down this year in the pen. Lift to the left, diving play, and an out. Cook able to come up with it to retire the side. Ramsey got a good whack, but Cook in left field able to hang on to end the inning. It was sinking fast as Ramsey thumped it on the line and Cook able to cruise in and somehow hang on. And Rice keeps his tie to the bottom of the 10th. Ellicott for USA, Rice has had the power. 2006, 2007, back-to-back -to -back tournament titles. Another in 2009 in the conference tournament final for the fifth time in six years. This year, looking for that fourth championship trophy all time. The chance to end it here at the bottom of the 10th after surviving a scare from Houston to the top of the frame. And Rice will have their number one hitting star to lead things off here in the bottom of the 10th. Anthony Rendon. Lifting one to left field. Room there for Ansley, but gets away from him. It'll be a double for Rendo. And Rice with a leadoff man aboard here in the bottom of the 10. Looked like Ansley was going to have room there, but may have got turned around the wrong way trying to track it down. Well, he did off the get-go. It looks like he might have lost in the lights here. I'm, I'm not quite sure why he's not playing a little deeper in a no-double situation. He actually broke in a little bit, too, and that's what got him. He broke in a couple of steps first and tried to recover. I'm not sure he can do it either. So Rendon is on to start. The 10th inning at second, and Michael Rattery, the batter. And they will intentionally walk Rattery here. Again, one of the top players in the conference who has pummeled Houston pitching most of the year, hitting in the neighborhood of 600. And with first base open, they'll put him on and deal with Craig Manuel. And I think this makes sense. I think Manuel will probably be up there to bunt and try to bunt them over, in which case they can load the bases again. But Rattery, the way that he's been swinging the bat, just don't give him an opportunity. Just stick him on there. His run ultimately doesn't matter. It's Todd Whitting. And the brain trust of the Houston staff making the call. Rattery aboard. And here's Manuel. 0 for 3 with a walk, and he's the only Rice player without a hit. Came in hitting 400 against Houston this year, and 500 so far in this Conference USA tournament with four runs batted in the first three games. Showing bunt. And Manisto steps off. And the runners, including Rendon at second, Rattery at first, head back. See how Houston defense plays this. It looks like they're going to play it straight up, which means they got to make sure they're going to at least get an out. But if it's bunted hard back to the pitcher, they should be able to get an out at third. And we're trying to get the bunt down, fouls it away. Pressure in this situation, not only on getting the bunt down, it's also on Rendon on second base. 
Now he's not getting much of a lead, which is fine, but he, he needs to get a very good secondary lead and really read the bunt. When the bunt's down, oh, has great. to go. Takes a lot of pressure off of the guy doing the bunting. He does lead this team in sacrifices this year with 11. We'll see if he can get it down to this situation. Manual. Through the hole on the left side, on the right side, excuse me. Here comes Rendon. That's it. Rice, your conference USA champion for 2011. effort by Houston but it all goes by the boards for the Cougars their season is done and Rice on to the NCAA tournament as Conference USA champs again Wayne Graham does it again and shock in the house everybody expecting the bunt everybody's in you know it's going to be a, a fastball at least around the plate and lets his it just lets him whack I love the aggressiveness trying to shoot it past the first baseman Having confidence in your players goes a long way. Look at that, Rendon scoring the run. Now the left-handed hitter able to drag it through on the right side. And Rendon going all the way and scores easily. And Rice does it again. Their fourth Conference USA title. Tying Tulane for the most all time. And Manuel, only Rice player without a hit on the night. That's still digging for a second, then finally realizes it's over. We won. And Wayne Graham and company celebrating again. Well, it is, and the streak continues for Houston and Rice. You know, just when he, and then in the last out they made in the top of the 10th inning was a bullet on a fantastic catch out in left field. So, I mean, not only was it some good defense at the end, there was some really gutsy offense. Greg Manuel, game-winning hit, an RBI for Rice. Wayne Graham and the Owls, the best in Conference USA. Again, back to Mississippi to wrap it up. Rice over Houston here on CBS Sports Network. Here's the final play of the 2011 Conference USA Tournament. Anthony Rendon, after leading off with a two-bagger, scores on the base hit from Craig Manuel, and Rice celebrating another Conference USA tournament tighter. And Manuel hand raised the Owls number one in CUSA again. Wayne Graham and the Owls. Pretty good success rate here, the Conference USA tournament final. Been in it five times in six years, and they've won it four times. 4-3 the final in 10. Let's take a look at tonight's play of the game brought to you by Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. And guess what it is? For Rice fans, won't get sick at look at this for a while. Well, I think it's just, it goes, it's a testament to Wayne Graham. He's been coaching for such a long time. He's been, he's been he knows what his guys can do. And he, try, he tries to give him the bunt sign when he, you know the first pitch didn't get it done. He said, you know what, enough of that. We've already had one failed bunt. I'm gonna let you swing. And I like the aggressiveness, and they're going to need that when they get into regional play. Well, Wayne Graham, the waiting is on. Where will they be? Will they be home for round one and round two? We'll see. Should they be victorious? But they are victorious here at the Conference USA Tournament Championship, getting the win over Houston, and the Cougars' season ends. After the loss here, not enough on the resume to get to the NCAA tournament, but certainly Todd Whitting, his first year as head coach, has the Cougars pointed in the right direction. But the Owls get it done, a 15th straight win over their crosstown rivals, the Cougars. Once again, the final score, Rice 4, Houston 3, in 10 innings. For Kevin Stocker, our entire CBS Sports Network crew, this is Jason Knapp for sports highlights, features, and more. Go to cbssportsnetwork.com.
This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. For the fourth game of this Conference USA tournament, Rice falling behind, but ending up in front when it counted the most. The Owls, Conference USA champs again.